Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the United Kingdom Podcast. This is episode 24, I believe. I could be completely wrong there now. I think it is. Yeah, um, I think so. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, I just thought it was, yeah. Um, sorry for the week hiatus last week. We just decided to skip a week, though, but we're pretty much... You, the- just, you just decided to skip a week. I was ready to record. Yeah. <laughs> I just wasn't really in the mood, though, because, you know, most sometimes you're just not really in the mood uh, recording out there. I just, oh. was, just was in one of those moods pretty much last week there. I just didn't really want to. Plus, I had to work, though, so didn't really want to do Derek it. Uh, and Derek. Yeah, Derek didn't want to do a two-man podcast either, so. Never yeah. Know. Sorry. <laughs> Weren't you supposed to do a solo one? Yeah, I was thinking about doing a solo one. Oh, yeah, you're one. supposed to do a D-Voice then, right? Yeah, it's like United gave them D boys them thing, but then I said, uh, you know, I don't, I don't feel like it doing it by myself. I don't know. Yeah, you didn't put a Matt Roy there, then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much the reason why that we I talk we talk our weeks here or so, but like it's, it's it's a term known as pulling an OKS, which is this other podcast that I listen to whenever they skip a week. It's just basically known as pulling OKS. OKS. Uh, if you okay. used to use to it means operation kill screen. Okay. Okay. It's just another podcast. It's an I listen to. Um so how are you doing this week, Dennis? Uh doing pretty well. Um getting closer and closer to my week's vacation. As a man. <laughs> yeah. I am actually off starting Friday. Friday I'm off and the week afterwards and the Monday after that, so getting a couple of, a little bit of a rest time before the holiday season. So pretty cool. So anticipating that. A lot of gaming. Yeah, I'll be off from next Saturday and uh next Sunday will be awesome because I'll be going to Edinburgh to see the Distant Worlds Final Fantasy concert, which I will talk about probably at length in a couple of weeks' time then. So you just have yeah. of that to look forward to um listen a bit to listen to. And also with me of course is Derek Gigastorm C. How are you doing this week, Derek? Good, I'm glad it's the weekend. I'm sick of working ninety nine hours. <laughs> oh weeks. that's less than <laughs> Yeah. It's a lot less than, it's less than last last couple of weeks though. It's like a hundred eight hours or something, wasn't it? Hundred and one. Yeah. So almost. Didn't make the trouble digits this time. I I could not work that many hours, so I don't know how you did. It must be a fucking rack. Um, it's not too bad if you're busy, but, um, yeah, I mean, I guess it takes away from your personal time, you know, that's for sure. Yeah. And that, that's, that's the good thing. As long as you are busy, though, because you don't want to fucking spend, like, the <laughs> majority of the time doing nothing during those shifts now. Yeah, right. Because if, if, if that was to me, like, if I had hardly anything to do at work, well, there's always, always something to do at my work anyway, though, if I'm done with my section and move on to another section, that's pretty much it, so. Usually fills the time up, though, sometimes it kind of, the last hour kind of drags, so that's pretty much it. But anyway, uh, do you want to start with the news, fellas? <clears throat> I guess we should, yeah. Um, there's a few news stories this week. Um, the first one, which I'll get Derek to talk about, since he'd be more um, affiliated with it than myself and Dennis would be, and that is G4 cancelling X-Play, attack the show, and reformatting into a GQ style. So, Derek, take it away. Right. Um, news hit uh, yesterday, I believe, that uh, G4 will be basically reformatting the entire channel, and along with that, they're cancelling X-Play, and Attack of the Show, there are two long-running uh, video game, you know, tech-focused TV shows, uh, which combined they've done more than 3,000 episodes. Um, it's gonna, it looks like it's going to be ending at the end of this year, and then starting next year they're going to be shifting direction. What they say is from geek to chic, um, <laughs> reminiscent of GQ, that's targeting the modern male. So I don't really know what the hell that means, <laughs> but you know it's really un- unfortunate that they're canceling the shows. But at the same time, the shows are no no longer uh, as good as they have been in the past. Uh, like with Adam Sessler leaving, Kim, Kevin Pereira, um, 
I yeah. think these shows were the best back in the late tech TV, early G4 days. Um, so, I mean, it's it's unfortunate, but, I mean, I guess it's not too much of a surprise. I don't know how many people really, really, really watched all these shows anymore after all the the changes recently. Um, I mean, I used to watch them all the time, but um, after... I think I stopped watching Attack of the Show. There's some people on there. I don't even remember their names. Um, they had people way back that were on, and they they brought in Olivia Munn, and they, then they, that's when they started to cater towards, like, a, a general male audience uh, with that show. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Sexy look like a chick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but, I mean, it's it's, it's probably a good thing that they're going to be changing them. Because they are not what they used to be, that's for sure. You guys, yeah, but I don't know. You guys ever watched? I watched Attack of the Show during lunch at work, but very, very rarely. I mean, you know, I caught it once in a while, but I don't know what a GQ style thing. What is it? They're going to promote perfume or I don't, clothes? I don't know. Okay. Like GQ or Esquire or something. I don't know. Yeah, because GQ is a magazine. And it's like yeah, kind right. of like, you know fashion and all that stuff as well. So that's mm-hmm. that doesn't sound good for people like you and I. Nope, not no. at all. <laughs> yeah, but I only know really. But I never watched any of the stuff though. I don't know if it's I don't no. Nah, the only thing I know about it is like I know Adam Sessler was associated with the that there like, he was back then. Yeah. yeah, that's all I know really. I've never watched any of them. Like, you, could you watch them on their site now? Uh, I don't think or so. No, because oh, I think that may have been... Because if that's the case, no. Because I couldn't watch it anyway. They probably removed them. Yeah. Oh. So that would have probably been the only way to have made for watch it anyway, since it had been, like, on, you know, spec or whatever it is over there. So mm-hmm. I couldn't watch it anyway. But it is a shame, though. I'm, cer- I'm sure some people still probably watch it, though, like, you know, religiously. But like, yeah. probably, like in dark opinion, probably the same, feel the same way. It's like it's just not as good as it used to be. Yeah. No. I mean, it's not. As, I mean, it, in these days, you know, the internet is the king of everything, and that's where you want to go to find your reviews and your videos and quick looks and you know all that stuff. News. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, there's I, something to be said about watching. Trailers and video game footage on your TV rather than on your computer screen. So, mm-hmm. yeah, like there's a few shows I used to watch back in the early nineties. One of them called Games Master, and the other one called Games World, and I really enjoyed them. And then kind of like you know just fall to the wayside afterwards. Then like there was a few other sort of game game shows or like you know game news ones, but they they kind of sucked. So, um. Moving on now, if, unless you have anything else to say in this matter? No. no. Okay, okay. A game that Derek's still playing the shit out of, and <laughs> I've <laughs> actually gotten back onto the bandwagon and played like a bit of, but nowhere near as bad as him, and Dennis is done with for the time being, and that is Borderlands yeah. 2. Yes, another problem has right, um, come um, in the form of a glitch. And that your data could, you know, cause him, Borderlands 2 hacking cause him player deleting glitch patch soon. Um, okay. So, Dark, I'll, <laughs> I'll go to you once again because you'd be more associated with us than me and Dennis. Alright. So, basically, there's been a major glitch going around. Um, for a while, nobody could figure out where it was coming from. And it's kind of referred to as the graveyard dot. SAV save glitch. Um, what seems to happen is when you die, like when you enter your fight for life mode, um, you never respawn. Like you just die and then you go into this free roam camera that you can just go through anything, go through all the buildings and just warp around through everything. And you try and reload another character or go to the dashboard or restart your Xbox or whatever, your save data is completely gone. Wow. Um, and there was a while where they didn't know what was causing it, but it seems that it's hackers on the Xbox 360 version that are using some sort of exploit or hack to, I'm assuming, you know, like, 
duplicate items or, or something like that. Or yeah, par leveling up to like 50 and all that probably, shit. Probably, yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, apparently they're going to be releasing a patch soon, um, but there is some advice. They say before you stop playing, always select save and quit from the pause menu. Um, if Which you, I do. <laughs> right. And if you do die and you go to the main menu for some reason, uh, immediately select continue and resume playing as that character. And I think every single time you die, you're going to have to do that. If that's and then that, that would basically mean that you are co- corrupted with that glitch. Mm. Um, the best way to avoid it is just just like if you don't have any problems now, just don't play with random people online. Just keep keep it with your friends, or keep it with your you know by yourself. Yeah, and then you know just get the get the patch whenever that comes out. Hopefully that's that's really soon. Hopefully next mm-hmm. week or sometime perhaps or yeah. a week after. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Agreed. unfortunate that these hackers are affecting everybody. Yeah, like I, 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 I looked this up though. I seen it though. I think someone posted about it on Twitter though about it, like Reddit, like oh geez, another problem because I don't know. Like if you remember, it was an, there was another little sort of you know bug when it came out though. And that fact is, if you did a certain thing before, like if you visited Tanis in Sanctuary before you actually went to Zombie, if you went to her first before you. Handed in a quest for Doctor Z, and then mm-hmm. went to her for like the dude that hand this other quest in or something. You couldn't do it, and therefore you you be you couldn't do any of the quests for her or for him again. You had to do it in a certain order, or else you'd be basically out of uh, doing a few side quests and that there. And I just basically made sure I did the proper way, or else I'd be fucked in that damn department. Then I didn't know there was a glitch like that. Yeah. I know there's, there is some glitch that will wipe your badass ranks. Yes, that's another sort of one that's been on the news. I don't know if well. that's fixed or what exactly caused that. Yeah, I don't think I have. Mm-hmm. I just know just... I think it was like a patch or something anyway. There was a patch. There was a patch, I, yeah. Yeah, so I assume that was probably the patch to fix that. Now. And hopefully this a patch for this problem here will come out soon enough. But like, I, I don't play with random people anyway now, so I, I hopefully it'll be all right. So I know you, you need, yep. I know you need it though to level up. Yeah, I need to fight. I need to defeat uh, Terramorphus, and I can't really do that by myself. Yeah. But yeah, I'll just say it's it's just it's just a shame that these problems, you know, Borderlands Two hacking yet? It's a surprise. It's not Call of Duty for once. There's the, there's the Call of Duty burn for this episode. We tend to do it every bloody episode now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but if I hear coming two weeks now and I hear Dan say, I picked up Call of Duty, I'm going to slap you, silly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen, I don't think so. I, unless it gets like tens everywhere and everybody's going nuts about it, I don't think I'll pick it up. Yeah, it's just going to be your it. typical five to four, five, four to six hour campaign along with multiplayer, which, you know will bring out the best of the Xbox Live community. And I'll watch yep. the worst. <laughs> yep. um, we'll see. There's a new site that's been going around for a while. It's, it was sort of in its development stages, and it officially launched this week. Um, some people might not know of it. It is called Polygon. And I believe, from what Derek has said, it's basically consists of certain, you know, former editors from Kotaku and other places. Isn't that correct, Derek? Right. Um, like some of the bigger names are Chris Grant, he's editor in chief, uh, Justin McElroy, Brian Crescente, who is from Kotaku, um, Matt Leo, and there's a bunch of other guys that I don't really know that very know well. But uh, yes, yeah, now a guy called Arthur Giles and things like that as well. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, that that got some big uh, news this week when that launched. Um, it's it's a very similar website to like Kotaku and Joystick uh, or like Destructoid, but they have forums too. So I guess those other websites don't. So it's pretty similar, but they also do you know reviews and news and other ed- uh, you know editorial articles and stuff. Yeah, Dar- um, we looked at it for a bit, and, Dar- and Dennis looked at it for a bit before we recorded here. <laughs> he's just looking at the scores that some games got. He's like, yep, 
I don't like this site. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nope. Not really. Uh, I don't know. The, the, the reviews are kind of weird. Like, the scores they give, you know. You go like, oh, okay, we don't really lean on scores and everything and reviews and all that. But, jeez. I don't know. <laughs> Some reviews are kind of weird. Like, the score they gave for it's Horizon. I was like, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I got was it four? I got six. Um, six? Yeah. You know... Thing got an 8.5 like episode 4 Walking Dead I know you two weren't really a big fan of that episode I yeah. personally liked it though mm-hmm. so he's probably thinking yeah. why did it get that much either so yeah it's, 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 the scores are kind of weird to kind of get you know, I don't know we'll have to keep an eye on those guys see what, what they do but if they're trying to get noticed I guess that's a good way to do so <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah Skylanders yeah. Giants got an 8, so that's, oh, an, that's okay. another one. Yeah, well, okay. other than, sure, like, a lot of people do like those games. That, that did very well last year anyway, because mm-hmm. of the whole toy line, and I'm sure it'll do well this season as well. Don't know if it'll be as successful, but I'm sure a lot of parents will get the, the kids for Christmas, you know, the yeah. toys and, like, the new game and that there. It'll but, be big for the play season, that's for sure. Yeah. That and Wii U, perhaps. Yep. Actually, before we move on here, Wii U is apparently in here in the UK has been used that there might be shortages when it's coming out. Which is like, yep. So we're going, we're going to get the short end of the stick this time round, are we? Shortages, yeah, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Never thought that would happen. Because <laughs> apparently, we're already, yeah, it's, it, it's been rumored, I don't know if it's been officially confirmed, though, no, apparently it's only going to get like 25,000 or something like going on those lines. Like, really? It's like, jeez. Like, I have it pre-ordered at the moment, though, and I was thinking of cancelling it, though, but if it's going to be, like, you know, the way the way the way was back in 2006, 2007, I was like, I might just keep it on. Yeah. Are you going to have any games to play when it comes out, though, that you want? Zombie, <laughs> Zombie year is the only game that I'm interested in. And then again, like, why am I paying 300 odd pound for one game? I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Like, Rayman Legend was delayed, which sucked, because that was the only other game I was interested in. Mm-hmm. But, like, the first few months next year is fine. Like, there was a few games, like Rayman Legends, the one not Wonderful 101, and a few other ones, Lego City Undercover. Like, at least there's a few games coming out that I'm looking forward to getting, unlike the Vita, which is mm-hmm. fucking nothing. So If they don't get delayed <laughs> again. Well, Rayman Legends, like, I hope it doesn't get delayed again, because it was supposed to be out launch here in the States. Mm-hmm. But nope, it got delayed, so that sucked. Um, but anyway, Polygon's officially launched. I just have to see how well it does now in the, um, yeah. in the future anyway. Will it be as, you know, will it be as credible in certain ways as Kotaku? Like, will it be as popular as those ones? And, you know, get bitch slapped from people with some of their ma- mundane articles and things like that yeah because people tend to um, you know ridicule Kotaku for some of the stuff they put up on their site I don't really tend to visit Kotaku that much anyway I never go on there no I'm very rare yeah it's just usually I have some my RSS feed that's yeah. kind of my primary source for news I always just tend to go there whenever someone links it to something like on Twitter or whatever that's the only that's the way the way it gets hits from me other than that, do not solely visit for anything else. So, mm-hmm. anyway, basically Apple had an event, and yeah, it's not really gaming per se, well, the kind of gaming per se though, but oh yeah, Apple had an event this week, and actually once again just milked the shit out of stuff like it tends to do. But yeah. uh, iPad 3 already came out this year, and oh wait, really, yeah, already have lines, long lines of iPad 4. And also, that rumoured iPad Mini has been officially launched. So, yeah. yay! It'll go next week, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like 200... <laughs> I think it's like 200 odd pound here for the... I think it's what... It's like three, over 300. 300 something. Yeah. yeah, I think it's $379, I think it is, or $329. Yeah, something like that. I think mm-hmm. it is. One of those... I know it ends with a 9 anyway, so... For what I... Like, it's still... Yeah, it's still there. Look, uh, yeah, it's paying that price. Who wants a mini? I, 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 I don't know. I, don't know. I, I honestly don't get it. Why would you want a smaller fucking screen? 
You, you should ask the uh, the people that are going to stand in line for twelve hours next week to to buy an iPad, an iPad Mini. Yeah, you should ask those people. Yeah, <laughs> I should ask those people exactly the answer because, quite frankly, I do not see the point. No, nope. to me, it's just not. like you know, I found iPhone five and those words. Oh, it's way smaller, not way smaller screen, or like way big, smaller width or something. Yeah, thinner. Like I like I said before, like th yeah, exactly thinner. Just all makes it all the more easier to lose, or yeah. br or break, for that matter yeah. as well, perhaps. I but uh, they're launching the iPad Mini to compete with uh, the Kindle Fire, which is uh, also launching, uh, I think, next week, or it's already launched or something and the like Microsoft, that. And the Microsoft Surface, is just, I think it's launched next week as well. Yeah. Yeah, Windows uh, 8 came out uh, yesterday, and they're launching uh, the Surface next week, I think, or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just... Um, yeah, of course, it's competition. Of course, they want to, you know, stay on top of everything. You know, I can understand that. But, uh, and there, as I said, there'll, there'll always be people standing in line waiting 12 hours to get those things. But I don't even see uh, why you should do such a thing. You know, they're a $389 device, you know, stand in line and... They could probably sell that for two hundred forty nine or two hundred nine, but they're just you know, it's Apple, so you have to pay for everything. And there's a text message from somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. I I don't see the the purpose. I know you know it's competition and all that, but anyway, they're gonna milk everything they can out of out of that. Yeah, like me and Derek. Like, what do you have now, Derek? So an iPad. Three or yeah, iPad iPad 3. Three. yeah, I have an iPad 3 as well, and I am perfectly fine with the one I have. I think I use it every day. I fucking love it. It's just easier just like to lie in bed sometimes, watch like, you know, jam bomb, quick clocks or, you know, live stuff and all that there. Just, oh, it's just so convenient. Yeah, I usually mm -hmm. watch, uh, yeah, a lot of jam bomb stuff or YouTube or yeah. I check like eBay or check my email. I don't really play a whole lot of games on it. I mean, I have some games, but... I don't know. Yeah, um, I have a bunch. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, I just say, I, I mean, I like the fact that there's, you know, some pretty cool games on here, but a lot of them rely so heavily on touchscreen controls, um, and some of those games aren't very well-designed, I guess, or easy to control. Um, so I tend to prefer games where, like, if you try and put, like, a console game on here, you know, like or, like, even, like, a Game Boy game, the Nintendo DS game on here that's really not going to work that very that well, but there are a lot of games that are like that, so I tend to stay away from those. But um, you know, I have like Angry Birds and stuff, and um, yeah, this is yeah, just, it, just certain. Who doesn't have Angry Birds on their <laughs> on their devices? <laughs> I d I don't. You don't? Nope. Wow, you must be one of the only people I know that doesn't play Angry Birds. <laughs> no. I don't really play it, but I have it on. I have, like, yeah. all of them, just because they were, like, a buck. And I was like, well, might as well. I don't see the appeal, really. I, I, I think there's better games I've played than that. Little tangent here. Did you guys see the that Angry Birds uh, game that came out for the Xbox 360? The trilogy. Angry like, Birds trilogy, that came out. Yeah. I think it came out here before. I've I don't know. When did it come out there? I think last it's week. This, this, last oh, week. It was yeah. just last week. It, it's been out here a few, a few weeks. I think it's been out here like three or four weeks. But do, do, do you see the... I mean, you can get the the entire Angry Birds trilogy, and you can get the Angry Birds Space, which is the new one, I think for like $2. Well, it's not really $2. $2. It's, like, it's, like seven, it's like 4 or $5 for a lot, though, where you're paying like, you know, what, $40? And it's like 30 pound here. For yeah. the first three, the first three, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on there, but Jesus Christ, it's like a, you know, there. I don't know. I don't see the. Uh, if you don't, uh, you know, it's very rare that you'll see somebody that doesn't have a, a pad or a phone, uh, a smartphone that they can play that game on. You know, I know there's probably a couple, but not a whole lot. I don't see why, you would buy that on a console. Honestly. Yeah, I don't know. 
Yeah, I honestly, I, I honestly don't really get. I wonder that. how it's going to do in sales. Yeah, I don't know how. It, I don't know how well. I don't know how well it did over here. I'm sure it probably still sold a bit though, but I'll figure. It is because that's the fat reason why it's been so bloody successful on the you know the, the phones and tablets now because the fact is it's so cheap, it's so accessible, yeah. and people love it. Yeah, you're not going to play. You're not going to get. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> you're not going you're not going to get the same, you know, enjoyment out of that for paying forty fucking thirty pound, forty dollars now. It's like I'm just it's the same bloody game. Yeah. It's like really. And you're not gonna play Angry Birds for five hours straight. No. You know, it's like you play maybe ten, mind. fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you you might play ten, fifteen minutes and okay, that's it, you know, I've had enough. Uh, which is my case, you know, I play maybe ten, fifteen minutes. Clear maybe one or two levels, and then I'm like, okay, that's enough, you know. I could play five hours of Angry Birds, <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but you know, that, that's how I do it. Nah. But that was a tangent. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. I just, I just don't really see the appeal of it though. Just like why why is this being released? Oh, just to make just to make sure. Oh, it's on this console as well. It's on everything but the kitchen sink. Mm-hmm. Um. But I'm going to get a Windows pad. I'm going to get a uh, Microsoft uh, tablet that comes out. Yeah, Microsoft Surface. Just because I want to compete with Apple. (laughs) Are you serious now? Yeah. Well, I don't don't want to compete with Apple. I'm not personally, but I don't know. I think Apple is just taking it too far, you know, with all those releases, all those new phones and pads and all that stuff. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think it's cool that... uh, and uh, you know another company, even though it's Microsoft, which is uh, has been known to milk also some stuff. So, but you know, I think uh, the Surface looks really good. You know, it looks really, really cool, and uh, I really want that. I really want that pad, so I'm probably going to get it for Christmas or something. Yeah, we'll see. And you'll enter the 21st century then with the with yeah. your tablet. <laughs> yeah, just got a smartphone like about a year. A year and a half ago, so now I'm gonna get a tablet. Yeah. Five years after. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I only I only got the iPad this year. I didn't get any of the other ones because I didn't really see the appeal of it though. Because like to me, I, when I first heard about the iPad, I was like, it's just a bigger iPhone. That's all mm-hmm. it was to me. But like I use it fucking extensively now, and I love it. And I don't see it. I don't. I don't get why. Like to me, this I I hate the people that all I bought one and then go out of the way to get the next one as soon as it comes out. Like, why? I I, yeah. I, I do not get that whatsoever. I work I, with two people that, so... <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, if I, if I, like, I got the iPad 3 there because the fact is I didn't have one already. It's like, I just want to get one now. I have the money for it. It's like, yeah, I'll get it now. And I'll do me fine until it breaks. Like, I don't care if I have the iPad fucking 6 coming out or whatever and I'll... I'd still be fine with my iPad. Yeah. It's like people go, hey, why do you buy NHL every year? It's the same fucking game. Well, why do you buy an iPad every year? It's the same fucking thing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> my game's $60, your iPad is $389, so go figure. <laughs> yeah, because... Uh, the minimum is 500 for an iPad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, my iPad, I paid £400 for my fucking 16 gigabyte one. That's only the Wi-Fi one. Yeah, that's what I have too, but I paid five hundred pound dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I it paid my been, tax return money for it. Yeah. Wow. It would have been five hundred pound now if I wanted the just the what the Wi Fi and the three G one, which is like no thanks, I don't want that. Like I wouldn't couldn't really curve it. I only really use it at home anyway though. I don't yeah. I don't I, no way I'm fucking taking it out in the bloody, you know, in the town now and someone could fucking come and just swipe it from you. Can't mm-hmm. can't trust humans nowadays anyway. Nope, cannot. Um, so that was a that's our little rant against I- Apple, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm, I, 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 I like me. I, I like I have an iPhone. I use it to listen to music and like you know, go and sing sometimes. Not there, and like I use my iPad. I, I, I like them a lot though. But I, I still, I'm not a fucking Apple fan, but I just hate the way they go on and look shit all the time. Yeah. But there is. Well, so, so. 
They they have good products. I gotta give them that. Their yeah, they have good products, good. but they just fucking knock the shit out of them. That's the problem. Their problem. Yeah. But like, it, yeah. it sells and it makes them a lot load of money. It's like Activision with Call of Duty and like games like that. If it sells, yep. of course they're gonna make the fucking shit out of it. Yeah. Yep. So, well, that, I think that's great. enough. For, and I think it's enough of our rant at Apple and iPads and Call of Duty. <laughs> well. That. Yeah, we're not done with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get to it by a couple of weeks' time. Oh, it sold a million. Big yeah. Pump. Um, the another special edition or collector's edition that's been revealed, which is a no-brainer because the fact is that's pretty much a gimme for most big games nowadays. And this one is for a game that all of us are very much looking forward to next year, and that is Bioshock Infinite. The Songbird edition was revealed. Now, yeah. I have to look this up now, because <laughs> should have, we should have put the link to it, because... Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, but I can talk a little bit about it, I guess. it's um, Well, it's a special edition that comes with the, I guess, a model of a songbird, which I guess is the main enemy in Bioshock Infinite, I guess. So it comes with a model of that couple of other things which I should have looked up and I don't remember. But, it, it's uh, going to be retail about $150, which is pretty much the standard price. So here yeah. it'll probably be like £100 or something. Or something, who knows, it could be £130, which is, that was the case with um, Skyrim, which I think was a fucking bloody <laughs> a robbery, in my opinion, for that there, collector's edition. Uh, could, it contains a nine and a half inch statue of the game's iconic avian enemy, which is, of course, the song, the songbird. Other goods include a little bound 64 page art book, a 25 millimeter handyman figurine, a propaganda poster lithograph, a three inch murder of crows bottle keychain, and a digital soundtrack. And um, nope. in-game's items include three exclusive gear power-ups, bull rush, strike down bones when you melee, Extra extra to earn money from collecting audio logs and portray to see enemies explode in a damaging ball of flames upon death. Mm. So, there's also going to be a special edition. So there's going to, of course, going to be the normal edition, there's going to be the special edition, and of course then there's going to be the songbird edition. So, mm-hmm. is this going to be one of those ones that you're going to basically see for the full price and then you see in a couple of months' time down to like, you know, half the price it is? Who knows? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> I think it's always the case, well, may, most of the case for these types of things, but uh, I'm interested in the uh, Songbird edition. I kind of like that uh, little uh, statue there, that little figurine. Like, I got the Skyrim one when it was like, hot, it was like £70. Pound. I was like, yeah, that's more along the lines of what I'd pay for it now, because no fucking way was I paying £130 pound for what you were getting in that. Mm-hmm. Because what you were getting was a, you were getting a art book, a DVD, and a, the statue of Alduin for £130. And that was not worth it, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And therefore, I just got on the, um, you know, the £70, which, maybe, again, might be a bit, still a bit too much, though, but more wrong lines of what I paid for it anyway. And... Yeah. and any of you ever get the Bioshock 2 Special Edition? Yeah, no. Know, 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah. I, I seriously got it from Best Buy for 10 bucks. Yeah. Wow. That, to me, is a nice Special Edition because it contains uh, the LP, like a final record of the first Bioshock soundtrack, mm-hmm. and then it has a CD one of the second one, and then it has an art book, and like these little wee po- like, propaganda things, and that was £50. When it came out, mm-hmm. like it looked really nice too. That was that was great, and as it comes in this nice little box as well. Like I paid sixteen pounds. I traded a few games to get it though, but like that for fifty pounds, great compared to some of the ones you get like a hundred pound or whatever. Like you get fucking deadly shit for some of those ones. Yeah. Like I yep. still regret getting that Halo Reach Legendary for a hundred pounds. Cause <laughs> That's like you got that. <laughs> yeah. I do not <laughs> fucking know why I got it, though. <laughs> like, what was it? Did next? you even finish Reach? Did you finish Reach? Yeah, I finished or... Reach, yeah. Okay, okay. Didn't know. No, that's the ODST you did finish, right? Yeah, because I fucking hate okay. that game. 
<laughs> couldn't get past the first fucking mission because every time a bloody tread to get anywhere I always get fucking sniped and one shot killed it's like yep this game I thought it was a great thing I thought it was a great game but I'm pretty much alone I think on that <laughs> now there's people I really do like ODST as well I'm not one of them mm-hmm. like it and the first one on the Halo series are the only ones I've never finished I finished oh, okay. two, I finished three, and I finished Reach. I'm pretty sure I'll finish four with their shelf in a couple of weeks' time when we play it in co-op, mm-hmm. which we'll talk about um, in a, when the time comes. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, I've also just to, before we move on, get uh, three Xbox 360 players get Booker and Elizabeth Avatar costumes, while PC and PlayStation 3 gamers receive themes. So. Beat. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> because you can download a wallpaper anywhere you want, but okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> by the way, because PlayStation Three, they don't have like avatars or anything like that. All of the like is like the icons and like you know themes to put in your background. That's all there is really. So, mm-hmm. and it's out on twenty sixth of February, which is like you know three months. Can- <laughs> I cannot wait for that game. I'm very excited for that. Four months, pretty much four months yesterday. Yeah. Is that your most anticipated game of the year? Of 2013? Well, what so no, far, yeah, of what we know. What, is it yep. Yellow Shark? I don't even know if I'm going to buy it. Really? I don't. It looks, I mean, it looks good, but I don't know. It's kind of like with Bioshock 1. Like, I didn't really think I was going to get it, and then I watched, uh, or no, I played the demo of Bioshock 1, and then I went out and bought it, like, right away. Yeah. But this game, it just, uh, I don't know, all that, like, Flying around on those little rails looks like it could be really difficult. I don't know. So I'm sure they'll make it easy for people to... Probably not very easy, but, you know, easy to get in. Kind of worries me, too, but, you know, we'll see. I'm pretty sure it's, it, is, it isn't that hard. Well, then I don't even know what what is even really going on. You're, like, protecting this girl or something. That's it? Yeah, well, you're fighting Thongbird, I guess, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, like the the new Big Daddy thing, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna, definitely going to be waiting for a quick look or something, or a demo, yeah. if there's a demo. Yeah, it's not my most anticipated game, because I think my most anticipated game is uh, Metal Gear Rising, Revengeance, because I think it comes out the same month. So okay. I'm very much looking forward to it, because I love Platinum. I love their games, so cannot well, wait for it. Um, moving on, Mass Effect 4 leaves Shepard behind. Mm-hmm. So, I, well, I, I, it's, I didn't even know. Since it. he's dead, I guess that's, you know. <laughs> Spoilers. Spoilers, but there you go. Well, not really. If you choose one of the endings, he's still pretty much alive in a way. Like, yeah, early. yeah, that's true. But that's really it, though. Yeah, sorry like that spoiler, so, but yeah, it's like, what? It's over six months now. I think, I, yeah. Well, seven months, yeah, seven months actually now, yeah, so. Mm. I think I want to want to play it now, so I want to play it though, so. Mm-hmm. I, I actually don't know about this now, so who, who's read up on this? I don't like, know about it either. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I really don't know. Like, uh, Who put it down there? Eric. <laughs> who put it down the yeah. outline? Yeah. <laughs> Was it you, Dan? Because I didn't know. I put, it, I put it there, but I mean... Um, Hold on, I'll, I'll go get. It. I'm sorry, folks. I just, I'm, I was just. I didn't even stuff. know they announced a Mass Effect four. No, okay. no, I have no idea about it either. Because it's what well, was it, on some obscure website? Because I didn't see anything about it either. So, okay, so t- talk amongst yourself. I'm gonna find. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna. We'll yeah. just, we'll just, we'll move on, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, move on. We we'll move on. Uh, uh, Zynga layoffs during the Apple conference. So yeah, yep. Singa is the ones who did do um, draw something in that, isn't it? Or is that something? Um, like? Is Zynga, um, is, is it Zynga the um, like Farmville and oh, that's Ma- right, that's, Mafia yeah, Wars yeah. and Cityville and all those Facebook games. Facebook yeah, games. Facebook games. Yeah, so apparently a few layoffs in that department though, when during the Apple conference, which I think some people probably said, "Yep, yeah, great," because I fucking hate Zynga. And everything they stand for. And there is people like yeah, that. They, they shut down, like, two or three studios, I guess. And they, they're shutting down, like, 13 old games or something. 
Yeah. Sounds like they, their their stock is in the toilet, and <laughs> nobody likes them anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a while. I think since they've been talking about. It. I've heard that. I've heard rumors of this for a while now, and uh, my cousin is in finances and all that, and he talked to me a little bit about it, and he's like, uh, yeah, they're, they're not doing very good, you know, with uh, the Facebook actions, you know, the Facebook uh, trade stuff not doing very well, so that didn't help, so it's not a big surprise, I guess, and uh, I know a lot of people play those fucking games on Facebook, but I am not one of them, so... I tried that fucking Sim City. What was it? Sim City. Sim City Social. Sim Social. 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 Social yeah. Yeah. And I was like, yep, yeah, I'm done with this. <laughs> I, I play. I mean, I play Song Pop. I don't think that's them. No. I don't think Song Pop is them, but um, yeah, I won't cry. You know, it's too bad for those people. I mean, it's never fun losing your job, but I won't cry over the company if you want. I don't really care. <laughs> So. Fuck singer. <laughs> That's pretty much all you're saying there, Dance. Yeah, not the people because you know I don't want people losing their jobs, but fuck the company. You know, uh, we, right, what's the story then about Shepard behind leaving Shepard behind then, Dance? Because I'd like to I'm, know. I'm still looking for it. I'm still. Uh, <laughs> I haven't found it. Okay, here we go. I think I it just it. came out of your bloody head, didn't it? Yeah, it came out of my head. Yeah, I want, I want them to. Or out right of your ass. More like I'm done. I'm done with Shepard. I found it. I'm gonna copy the link to you guys in the chat here. There you go. So there, that's the. Uh... So um, I guess uh, by where Montreal, a producer confirms that Sh Commander Shepard's story has come to a close. Next game and role-playing game series will feature very, very different context. So. Well, that's gonna be okay. different. Yeah, so that's that's not really a surprise anyway, though, because I think I, I I think we had a feeling that was gonna be the case. So at the end of Mass Effect Three, anyway, it was gonna be you know it's gonna be the end of this story, and then if they ever do a next one, it's gonna be a different story altogether. And they don't want to make a Shepherd if the two. They kind of he he says here. Uh, so first, we don't want to make a Shepherd two, or Mass Effect Four. We're like, oh, there's no more Shepherd, but you're a soldier in the universe. So this will be a very, very different context for sure, and nothing has been decided on the rest. So as I assume it's going to take place after the events of Mass Effect 3, then? Probably. So I just hope it's not a, a prequel, because fuck that. Yeah, we've, all, we've seen enough of them already with the like, Gears of War and, you know, God of War as well. It's like, yeah. Just a bunch of games and you know, more prequels, okay? <laughs> I was like okay, I was like yeah. So, um, I I don't know know what, what I think about this here anyway. Like it's like yeah, Mass Effect more Mass Effect I guess. Like yeah, I guess it's good and all though. But like, I enjoyed I say I enjoyed Mass Effect three though. But like, I I I wasn't in love with it now. So I I I <clears throat> be a while before I can really care about Mass Effect again. Yeah, it's kind of. With that ending, I don't know if we can get back into uh, unless they do something completely different, like if they redo the series and hey, here you go, it's something totally different. We'll, we'll have to see how it goes. I mean, I didn't hate the game; I hated the the ending, but I didn't really hate the game that much. I think it was a pretty good game. All I won't say here the ending now is a bit different to it. Yeah, I still think people overreacted though, but like. If, oh, yeah. if you hit the end again, yeah, go ahead, but don't go fucking ape shit over it, though. But like I said, I still think that whole thing just got blown way out of proportion, though. Some people yep. some people think it was the fucking worst thing ever in gaming. Like, really? Worse. Yeah, <laughs> some people just say, fucking fuck it, yeah, fuck bad, where I burn them down, burn... Like, all that. I was like, really? Like, seriously, it's a bloody game. It's not like fucking bad, where I came in and fucking, mur mur fucking murdered you now or anything like that. Yeah. But they murdered Shepard, so... <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about this Dark Knight, d -car? Not really. It's going to be a long time before I care about Mass Effect again. Except for yeah. the multiplayer. I mean, that's, you know, that has no story to it, but... Uh, mm -hmm. I guess it's kind of like Halo 3. Like, when I finished Halo, Halo 3, I was like, what? That's it? You know, I'll just finish the fight crap, and that was it? 
And now it's like, uh, I'm starting to come around maybe on Halo 4 a little bit. But, uh, yeah. you know, it's going to be a couple of years before I'm excited about Mass Effect again, I think. But I think they finished the fight finished the fight with a Covenant. That's another uh, another enemy in this one. So and the Halo Covenant 4. are in this again. Yeah, they're, yeah, well, in, they're in this as well, Dennis, so it's not very really. sparse. I read, I read that they're very sparsely in it. Yeah, it's like it's like these. It's like the space. It's the Metroid Prime space parts. Yeah. They actually like they have an enemy name that I haven't really been looking up much on. I'm sure they have a name though, but I just didn't look. Yeah, they do. Okay. I can't remember, but they do. Yeah. <laughs> so. Very much. Look at yeah. Before, so so. Yeah, me and Dennis will be playing that both during our week off. Yeah. We'll playing some co-op be, together. Yes, we shall. And maybe some multiplayer, I guess. Yep, let's go with the wonderful, fantastic Xbox Live community. <laughs> yeah, get our, get the, well, if we, if we just, you know, go into the chat and we're, that's the thing, we don't do public chat anymore, we just go into private yep. chat and not hear, get our ears bleed by, you know, creepy best and teens. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. He shouldn't be anywhere near a game like that in the first place, but well it's that on Call of Duty of course. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sure there's probably like ten year olds playing Call of Duty when it's like a M rated game or like, you know, eighteen mm-hmm. here, so of course. Of course. So. so anyway that's pretty much all the news except for what is released. So what was released this week, well, before we're recording this on the Saturday, what was released this week was, what, Forza Horizon? That was yeah. the game. Anything else that I can think? I don't think there was really anything else of important. There. Hotline Miami. Hotline Miami. Hotline Miami. Which is getting a lot of buzz. Yeah, so very, is. very much. A lot of people... I will not play that game, but, yeah, it's getting a whole lot of buzz. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people really, really really enjoying that game and some people think the soundtrack on it's awesome yeah i have to disagree because i watched a quick look for it and to me it sounds very generic it just seemed the same fucking tune for infinity oh, now, yeah, I can, dark, I can enjoy. dark we were talking about this before you jumped on dark and me pretty much share the same opinion on that like he listened to some of the stuff on Song Klein think it's good though, but he just feels that it's not as good as some people claim it is. Yeah, I think the the soundtrack for Gianna's Sisters' Twisted Dreams is better. Which was also released this week, so it was. Yep. Yep. I watched a quick look for it and was like, yeah, this is a game I'd probably pick up in the near future because it looks like my kind of game. Nice, you know, nice art style. Mm-hmm. Um, Patrick Klepek mentioned it, look, it gave him a train feeling as well, which I definitely can see that similarity. Yeah, uh, that's true. And therefore, I'll check it out. Look, it has a nice art style to it, and I'll definitely be picking it up in the near future. <coughs> There's so, another game, Dave. Medal of Honor Warfighter. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. That was released yep. this week, um, so yep. it was, and <laughs> it's not been getting the best reviews. Nope. It's not been getting a whole lot of buzz on that end. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was a little bit interested in the game, and then I watched the uh, mega long quick look that they did uh, for 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 the game, and I was like, "Yep, this looks like fucking crap." So I am not picking this up. It looks generic as fucking hell. I said, "Yep, I'm not touching this game. Forget it. Maybe if it's ten dollars somewhere down the line, I'll get it for PC because apparently it looks very good on PC." But uh, no, not now. Especially with Halo coming out. I'm not getting it, for sure. Yeah, the campaign's not supposed to be that long anyway, which is like, yeah, it's going to be your typical... I, I'll probably rent it, though. Like, I actually enjoyed the campaign in the first, the reboot one two years ago. I yes. thought it was pretty good. Yes. Yep. But, but this one good. here, I think, looks worse from what I've seen of mm-hmm. it. Yep. It looks, uh, it looks pretty, uh, pretty bad, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, it looks, it looks quite generic, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I guess but we'll... I guess it's not authentic enough to be great. Yeah, and they released this game like uh, a couple of weeks before called uh, before Black Ops 2 and before Halo 4, so 
but it's kind of EA did the same thing last year with Battlefield 3 they want to get the head start yeah so but they're going to get lost in the lost in the shuffle yeah I think down the line so. it's not, I don't think it's going to do well because the reviews for it haven't been really kind to it Call of Duty Call of Duty always does very well so even though, though we bitch and we cry and moan and all that about it it still does pretty well yeah, it still, still does good. Without, yeah, it still does good reviews. Like some people still give it crap score though because they're not they're just sick of it though, but it still does pretty good. Like like I said, they're good they're good, good well made games though. Hmm. Yeah. We're not gonna bitch that they're not like broken pieces of shit now. <laughs> yeah. But like it's just we just kinda get sick of them being you know, churned out every year now. That's kinda what we feel about it. Um and though, because like the fact of the whole Mel of Art, the thing was that there was no review code for anyone. I won't have to yeah, get it when it right. came out because there was this big fucking laundry list of um, fixes they had to make mm-hmm. to, for a day one patch, and people were like, yeah, it, "How did this get through certificate um, c- c- certification if yeah. if all that stuff was in it?" Yeah, that's right. It was like, "Whoa, okay." You saw the like in the quick look. Patrick holds up the uh, like the list. There's like two pages of stuff. Yeah. I'm like what the fuck? Holy shit! But apparently you can get the as they were saying in the quick look. You can pay uh, to be able to like pass certification, and if you promise to have a patch that'll fix. Yeah. Other than that, in day one. Yeah. So. so that's pretty much the reason why. So in other words, it's kind of a a bit of bribery. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. A little bit of bribery. Yeah. But at least at least so it, at least it did fix it though on like certain other games were released that were broken a piece of shit like our factory. That's what I jokingly said to someone. Yeah. On Twitter about it because I think he said like how did this get through certifications and I just basically said ask the people who made our victory because they got through cert- certification and that game that game apparently was a, was a broken piece of shit. Yeah. Cause That's it, right. It got like That's a true. two on. I think I think got a two on Gamespot. Yeah. So. But the worst reviewed games of the year, I think, or something like that. Yeah, when it came out. Hmm. Um, yeah. professional Latin in America mask, which was released as well. Oh, uh, that's coming out the uh, next week here. It was released Friday here. Okay. So, but it is out next. It is night. I think it is at night next week for you guys. So, but it was released to here yesterday. I'll get it in the future. I haven't even finished the last one yet. Spectre's Call, so <laughs> I'll get it. I love, I love the professional Latin game, so I'll definitely pick it up in the future. Um, yeah. Not so sure about the 3D poly, 3D models now. Yeah. It looks, it looks weird as hell to me, but I'm sure I'll get used to it when I play it, when I play it myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Unfinished Swan was released as well. Yeah, and I saw the quick look at that. It looks... Uh Looks a little weird. I only watched the. I didn't watch the quick. I think I watched a bit of it or some other video of it where it's basically he's just throwing paint to fi- figure his way out to get to the next area. Mm-hmm. That's not, part of it. Yeah, but there is like different um, types of game play, t- different um, gameplay mechanics in it as well. Other than that, I believe so. I haven't mm-hmm. watched. The, I didn't watch the quick look for it, so I have no idea what it's about. <clears throat> um. I think that's pretty much all that came out this week now, but next week is pretty much... Just Hold on to your hats. Hold on to your <laughs> hats indeed, because next week is a pretty big week for gaming. Good God, I'm looking at the games right now, and it's like, Jesus Christ. Um, in terms, yeah, one of the games that I know yourself and Derek is getting and cannot they'll probably be playing a good chunk of is Need for Speed Most Wanted. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which is, I believe, was your is your most anticipated game of the year, isn't it, Dennis? Yeah, it was my most anticipated game of 2012, uh, coming out uh, next week. Very much looking forward to it. Like, uh, more I, more I see of it, the more it looks like Burnout uh, Paradise, like a new version of Burnout Paradise, and uh, it looks fantastic. I can't wait to get my hands on that one. <laughs> so. I think Derek is getting it too, so we'll be doing some. Uh, yeah, I got it pre-ordered. I'll pick it up on after work on Tuesday. Cool. I'll have it on Tuesday also, so we can do some racing. I might get it next. I might get it. 
I might get all these so many games when I'm off though. <laughs> so uh, just going a bit of a. I might go and end. I go and I go and end on the Monday after like this. I go there and just basically go on a fucking spending spree and get all these new releases in. Mm-hmm. No, no, and me. Um, another game. It's the third in the series, or more like the sixth or whatever. If you're or yeah. just, whatever, it's ninth or whatever overall because like there's spin-offs and that there is the Assassin's Creed 3 which yep. I cancelled my pre-order for um, because I don't know why I just I don't, I don't see myself playing that game anytime soon quite frankly and therefore I just want to I want to get it when there's nothing really coming out which unfortunately mm-hmm. I think it might be in December time when there's nothing really out because yeah. from January next year there's fucking sh- loads of shit coming out yeah, we don't have a break from January next year. There's loads of games coming out, so I know you, I'm not getting it. Um, Daz, I think you're not getting it now, are you? No, I'm gonna wait a little while. Uh, uh, it, I mean, it looks great. It looks pretty fantastic. Uh, but uh, revelations that uh, left a sour taste in my mouth, and I'm just gonna wait a little bit and probably get it as a, as you said, uh, Darren, uh, during the holidays. Yeah, I'll probably wait until it comes out on PC also, because I kind of want to play it on PC. So uh, yeah, it's we'll, it's out in November twenty third here yeah. on PC, so it'll probably be the twentieth for you guys then. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. I, I, I hold off. Mm. But Dark's getting it, aren't you, Dark? Yeah, I'm getting it on Tuesday. So you can tell us all about it though next time. Mm-hmm. See how great it is. Yeah, assuming I don't play a whole bunch of Need for Speed Most Wanted, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I it know. looks really good. It looks. I mean, the the setting is really. I mean, I don't know if I should say unique, but I mean, you don't get a whole lot of games set in that time period, so I think that'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I I'm not even gonna bother with Assassin's Creed Revelations, even though I own the game. I'm just not even gonna play it because I heard so many bad things about it. Yeah, I'm the same as you. I'm not going to even go to bother with the revelations. I like to look up the synopsis for it. Oh, actually, I did kind of get a bit spoiled, though, because I did watch the escape from my stupid Assassin's Creed, yeah. and it kind of yeah, did well, say what happened at the end, though, but I kind of might just look up the synopsis for it, because I did, I did play a bit of revelations, and just not really was in the mood for it, because that tower defense basically definitely left the sour taste in my mouth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It sucked big time. Exactly. And hopefully there's nothing like... Uh, I'm sure they'll probably learn from their mistakes now and know for a fact they won't have anything like this. Yep. Like that in this one here. But it does, it does look good. It does look really good. Really do like the Colonial America set, you know, so mm. it should be good. I'm sure it'll do well anyway. Again, I, know, that, I might change my mind. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? I might get with those. Do 180s. Uh, yeah. I, I could probably do the same thing. I'll say I'm not going to get it and then go fucking get it at work or something next Thursday. I think it's yeah. I think it's out here on Wednesday. I think we get it the day after, so mm-hmm. we'll have to wait and see. Um, again, the dad's very much looking forward to thanks to the career mode and that's WWE 13. Yes, yeah, that one. I mean, it actually, I, I guess I could say, replaced uh, Assassin's Creed 3 in a way. Um, people are going to say, "What the fuck?" You know, but uh, being a WWF WWE fan, I guess, uh, especially a fan of the uh, of uh, the Attitude Era, I guess, it, which is very, very well represented in this game. Uh, I read about it and looked up a whole lot of stuff about it, and, and I'm really anticipating this game a whole lot. It seems like they, they put, uh, how can I say, like they put the package in there, they put a whole lot of stuff in there, and to get fans really interested back in the series, so... Uh, yeah, I, I really, really can't wait to play Universe Mode. Looks fantastic to me, so. Anyway. I might pick it up, though, because, like, the more I see of the trailers and that there and what they have in the Attitude Era Mode, the more I want to tr- check it out, because it does look pretty cool. Like, I'm a big fan of the Attitude Era as well. I absolutely loved that time. That's still, to me, is, like, I could still go back to watching, like, you know, moments in that are and like you know still get entertained while there's nothing like that nowadays like what yeah, was the last sure. like really great thing that you can like fondly remember that came out in the last couple of years hardly anything mm. well 
I don't know. That's, Maybe the uh, that's the, the whole CF Funk. Yeah, thing. that's probably it though. Like that happened last year, but other than that, yeah. what is there? Rock came back, and you know, I guess. Yeah. That's some. But like, not yeah. like I think to the like the moments that had in the attitude are like the whole. Like there's no. Yeah, well, they, they can't do that anymore. So, yeah. You know. <laughs> there's just no unique storylines or anything like that anymore now. It's just you know, kind of generic shit. Yeah. Like back then, they had like the fucking corp, the corporation, the Ministry of Darkness, and all this kind of fucked up storylines and that there. But nowadays, it's just yeah. like you know, generic crap. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, but, yeah. I actually, but, I, I'll just probably might pick it up um, from your th- if you think it's good though. If like, if they fix the controls and the reversal stuff, that's if they, if if, if, if I, I doubt it though. But if they fix those two things. Then I'd, I'd I'd be I'd be satisfied because that's the main problems I have with that that game last one. Mm-hmm. Um, Zone of the Enders HD collection is coming out, and this includes a demo of Metal Gear Rise and Revengeance, and I might pick it up just for the demo. <laughs> Good, <laughs> yeah, probably might do that exactly. You pull a crackdown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Dragon's Dogma. Yeah. Well, I I didn't pick up Dragon's Dogma for the Resident Evil 6 demo now. That, well, I wasn't out there. I'm sure people did, though, but that, that wasn't for me now. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I've got the Sony of the Enders game. I played the first one. I finished it, though, and liked it. I played some of the second one. I quite like it as well, though. But I, I like those games, though, but I don't know. I, I, might, I think it might be budget priced anyway, but. I'd probably get it in the future when it's stick cheaper, before you know Metal Gear Rising hits anyway, so I can play yeah. the demo and just get more pumped for Rising. <laughs> and that Natural Selection Two game I think is coming out in PC, which was a quick look for it as well, I believe. Yeah. Um, Assassin's Creed Three Liberation, which and is the Vita, Vita spin off of Assassin's Creed Three, which stars a lady. The first um, female protagonist in the Assassin's Creed series, which is pretty nice. Yeah. Um, Ragnarok Odyssey, which is this like you know kind of fantasy star online style um, RPG on the Vita as well. So finally, there's some few games for the Vita coming out that people are excited for because it's yeah. pretty much been a drought and um, for quite a while anyway. Um. Apparently, Lego Lord of the Rings is coming out next week on the Vita DS and 3DS. I don't know if that's the case now. It could be. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the Jam Bomb schedule here. Okay. Right, Carnage, which is another PC game. One that I'm very much getting next week um, coming on PSN is Okami HD. I am definitely getting it. Oh, yeah. Because Okami mm-hmm. is one of my favorite games of all time. And a nice upscale HD version of it. It looks pretty sweet. So, definitely be getting it. And that's pretty much the releases for this, for the next week there. Oh, uh, there's a, you forgot one, there's DLC for, the first story driven DLC for Sleeping Dogs, which is Nightmare and Not Point. Ah, who cares about that shit? That shit. <laughs> uh, which, uh, so far is my game of the year. <laughs> So, um, uh, but it's zombie stuff, so I'm yeah, not, not sure. Yeah, I'm not fucking surprised. Like, all oh, things fucking zombies DLC nowadays. Yeah. Like, Jesus When Christ. I saw it was zombie stuff, I was like, oh, great. This is great. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I'll probably got to wait on that one. You know, I love sleeping dogs, but the zombie stuff, oh, fuck that. I'm going to wait a little bit. Yeah. Like, I, I, I haven't even finished Sleeping Dog yet either, so I have to get back in that, that game. Mm. So, yeah. They so, though, when, like, probably, Jerry, like, you know, in um, December time, I'll probably be the time for me to finish up some of the games that I've, like, you know, played some off and, like, try to finish off and make up my final game of the year list then. <laughs> Ryan Davis just bought a PS Vita. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I kind of wanted to reply to him and say, tell him, name me five games. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you said. <laughs> yeah, I just say that there. Yeah. yeah I'm going to do it. I'm going to reply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. But anyway, I think we'll move on now. I think that's everything that there is. That yeah. That's like the, the game releases, though. So we'll probably talk about a few of those next week now. Because some of um, So we will. But now let's get into the games that we've been playing now. So, Derek, since you have the shorter of the list, I'll let you go first. Uh, okay, yeah, I've basically been playing mostly one game. But uh, I will briefly mention Tokyo Jungle again. I think uh, just after the last time we recorded, I uh, continued my survival mode with the alligator, and I ended up getting to year, like, 96. Um, and there's actually a trophy for surviving for 100 years. And I got killed by a pack of, like, raptors or something. I don't know what they were. They don't call them velociraptors, they call them something else. But uh, they're basically like raptors. And there's probably like six or seven of them. I just got freaking killed. That I didn't help that the uh, it was raining and I was getting poisoned from the rain at the same time. So um, that sucked. But um, the, the alligator is really powerful. He's just really, really slow. And his hunger meter is very low. That's, that's his mm-hmm. biggest problem. But uh, I can like... I could take out, like, pretty much anything with the alligator. Like, those dinosaurs, you know, even if there's, like, two or three of them, I could take them out easy. Or, like, tigers or lions, you know. It's it's pretty fun uh, taking them out pretty quick. Um, so, yeah, I only played that really, like, the one time there because I got upset that I didn't make it to 100 years. I still have to pick that up, so they... It's a fun game. I like it. I definitely recommend it. Um, I've mainly been playing Borderlands 2. Um, what a surprise! <laughs> uh, the DLC was released. Uh, was it last week on the 16th? Like yeah. Uh, Captain Scarlet and her pirate's booty. Um, I actually played through all of that by myself. Um, in actually, I, I played in true vault or true vault hunter mode. I didn't play in like the playthrough one mode. Um. And that was really tough at first. Um, I'm playing as the assassin, and I think when I started playing it, I was probably level 37 to 38. And the enemies, like the very beginning, I think the enemies were about level 39. Um, and then towards the end, it was probably they were probably like level 44, 45. And I was getting my ass kicked by these these uh, rabid skags. They just freaking destroy me. Even even when I go into my you know, deception mode and I go up behind him and I melee him, it still didn't kill him. Um, it would probably only do like maybe a quarter or to a third of damage to them. Oh, and I was really getting frustrated, and you know I wasn't really having that much fun with the the melee anymore. Um, my main problem is it's hard to it's hard to run after guys in melee him when they're running away from you. Even, I mean, they, even even when you have your decoy out, they still run away from the decoy. They like they run backwards and they shoot at you. Like that's what they do. A lot of a lot of the, like the bandits and stuff. And the skags are just constantly jumping around all over, and it's hard to see them when you're in first person mode because they're lower. You know, they're short. Most of them are short anyway. Um, so a lot of times I'd go into my deception mode and I'd try and melee somebody and I'd miss, or I'd run towards somebody and I couldn't catch them in time before my timer ran out. And that was you know that's basically just like a waste of your power. Um, and I was just getting destroyed, like, so quick. So I decided to respec my assassin and build a sniper build. So I basically almost in- filled out the entire tree on the left side, the sniping mm-hmm. tree. And and I, al- and I also, at the same time, I used one of my golden keys on one of the golden chests, the golden chest there that's in the Sanctuary. And I got, like, some, like, badass sniper rifle that does slag damage. That was like you know that's my level, so you know it'd be way more way more powerful than anything I had. So uh, like almost immediately after I did that and respect and went back to where I was getting my ass kicked, I was just like wiping the floor with just about everybody. <laughs> it was so much fun. I mean, I, the skags still gave me some problem. Like if I you you kind of got to stay back as far as you can and take them out. Yeah. Um, because if they come at you, you're just going to be screwed. And even, like once I have the, you know, once I respect with my sniper build, my melee bit, I didn't do that much melee damage to him. So, um, so I basically had to switch to like a rocket launcher when they were right in front of me and try and take them out that way. Um, I mean, even now, they, whenever you encounter like a rabid skag, there's also rabid stalkers, 
those things are freaking tough. So you got to aim for their head and get a crit, and you know, and I can probably kill them in like one or two hits that way. But yeah. um, so yeah, I, once I respect, I was having a lot more fun. It's pretty easy to get headshots on those pirate guys because they don't react the same type, the same way as the bandits. Um, most of them kind of just like stand in one spot and shoot at you. So I can, you know, line up my shots pretty easy that way. Um, there's a few that'll come running at you, like the pirate ninjas, the uh, the ghost pirates. I think they're called cursed cursed pirates. Those are pretty tough. You don't take them out quick. Um, the anchor man. Those can be tough. Um, whalers. There's a lot of there's a lot of new enemies in that uh, DLC. It's pretty. It's, I really enjoyed it overall. Um, yeah. And I'm def I'm glad that I respect to a sniper because I- I'm having a lot more fun with the game. Um. The story, you know, is pretty good. Um, there's some pretty good humor in, in that DLC. Um, I think the best thing, from here, the thing I liked the most about it was the very end after you defeated the, the huge uh, Leviathan, which I soloed, and that was a little tricky. But um, kind of like what's similar to the original DLC in the first game, in Borderlands 1, um, in the Secret Army of General Knox, and also in the Claptrap Revolution, there are these huge treasure rooms filled with like dozens of treasure chests. Um, mm-hmm. Once you defeat the vo- defeat the lights and in the DLC, there's a room just like that. It's like on a, it's kind of on the top of this like a, uh, kind of like a Mayan pyramid type thing, um, and it, it, it's it has a lot of these statues of those those alien things in the, from the first game. Yeah, I, I can't remember what they're called. Are they just called Ridians or something? I think. Yeah. Oh, is that the uh, one that the so. things you fought near the end of the game, wasn't it? Yeah, and then they also had there was Iridian weapons as well in the first game. Um, yeah, I think they are. I think that's what they are called or something. Yeah. So there's a bunch of statues uh, all around this this pyramid thing, and I was like half expecting to have to fight a whole bunch of those dudes, but uh, well, I'll, I'll let you find out for yourself. So, uh, <laughs> but anyway, I took a picture of that treasure room on top of that uh, pyramid. Yeah, that was a whole lot of treasure treasures. There. Uh, I saw the picture. The and that was. That was nice. I couldn't even fit it all in the picture. There were so many. <laughs> that was fun opening up every single one of those. Um, I think I got blues, blues or purples from a whole, whole, most of them. I didn't get I didn't get any legendary weapons or any orange weapons or anything. But uh, okay. that was fun. I mean that that was totally worth it. Going you know finishing it and then going to that room and opening up all those chests. Uh, I got some pretty good stuff from that. So, mm-hmm. um, so I, I'm on my quest to get to level fifty. So I can fight uh, Terramorphus, who is like the epic boss in the main game, um, kind of like the Cromorax from Borderlands One, who was in the Secret Army of General Knox DLC. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's actually there's another um, boss like that in the DLC. I can't remember what his name is, but um, I haven't seen him yet. Now the problem is you can't you can't really solo that that kind of boss, so I kind of have to wait until either you, you guys get up to my level, or I f- find some random people to play with. But I can't do that with that glitch that's out now, so uh, yeah. that's a problem. But, um, I yeah, I mean, what I want to do is, you know, defeat those guys, and then start farming for legendary weapons, um, and get to the 2- 2.5. It's like New Game Plus again, like after you beat it a second time. There's like another New Game Plus. And everything is level 50, and all the loot is level 50. Okay. You're going to be getting, like, you know, really good shit all the time, so that's going to be cool. Um, so, yeah, I'm really, I'm really liking the game more now that I respect my character. I was having a lot of trouble with the melee for a while there. Um, um, and I'm looking forward to, you know, playing with anybody that wants to, if anybody's closer to my level, or if you're, like, level 20 or so, I can uh, switch to Gage the Necromancer, or Necromancer, which I... I really have a lot of fun with as well. Yeah, I've been playing with Derek there with uh, my, my character since we played we played a few times like there last week and that there and I say I think it's better off I just play that game in co-op though just because you get to certain areas quicker though and just I think it's just a lot more enjoyable though. Yeah, it is. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean that's that's one thing I I wish I knew more people that were my level that were that were willing to play so. uh I don't know. Maybe someday, <laughs> yeah, you all get level fifty or so, and we can play like crazy. But you don't get that with people like um, Ben, who hasn't played that game in like three weeks, three or four weeks. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, the, the few people that I have on my friends list that are playing it, they're all like 
level 12 or something, or not even level <laughs> 20. So, yeah, it doesn't seem like a lot of people are, are playing it as much. Like, when it first came out, there's a lot of people, but then it, it kind of died off pretty quick. Yeah, it yeah, did. Yeah, well, it came out after Born Announced 10. I don't know if there was anything that big that came out after it, though, because some people just bought my just play for, like, a week and just, like, you know, just kind of have their fill, though. I don't think anything really... Well, XCOM, I guess. But no, like, not, like, it's the honored, week after. Yeah. Like, the week after now, like, that was... The week right uh, after? I don't know. Yeah. I don't really think there was anything to tell those games, really, if, as far as I can remember. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It's really weird. So that's pretty much it. Um, just really enjoying Borderlands. I, I highly, highly recommend the DLC. Um, you can do it co- solo. I mean, I did. Um, it's probably easier if you have a different class, like... Uh, you know the commando or the siren. Um, I know that I think the assassin has the lowest health of all the classes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think with the siren it'll be a lot easier because you can control groups of enemies. Um, with the commando you can throw out your turret. Um, not really sure about the gunzerker. I don't know a whole lot about that class. But um, no, me neither. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know anybody that uses uh, uses the gunzerker. But. Um, yeah, really enjoying it. That's that's uh, that's about it for me. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'll go next now since I have a load of games here, but I'm not going to, you know, go into detail with every single one now or else we'll be here for the next hour. Um, mm-hmm. I want to mention X-Men Destiny, which, again, came out last year by Silicon Knights. Uh, I believe it came out last year, or early this year, I believe I forget. And I just... I just went and decided to go, because I got this a few, um, like a month or so ago for cheap, and I just decided to go on a whim and get it, though. And I just went on a whim, I just, I just felt like playing it, though, for some reason. I just want to play through it, though. And, um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend this game. I wouldn't recommend playing this game. It's <laughs> it's it's not that great. It's, it's, it's all, bad. It's, I wouldn't say it's, like, bad, bad. It's, it's average at best. It's just, like, one of those, you know... You just play through it, though, and it's like, yep, yeah, I played this game. It's nothing memorable. It's just like, you know, you know, your standard generic game, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, like, if you watch the quick look for it, though, it's just basically you can choose one of three, um, you know, heroes, and then you can choose one of three sort of, like, like types of power there, where you like, there's, like, the projectile, there's this, like, shadow one, which I chose. I chose the girl. From Japan, the Japanese girl, and I chose like the shadow one, which was pretty cool. But and then you go to the stories and you like you encounter the you know the certain you know X Men characters, you know like Wolverine and you know Cyclops and that there. And then there's these so there's these certain moments where it, you can choose to do a mission for the X Men, or you choose to do a mission for the Brotherhood, like someone there like. From, like someone from the Brotherhood would be there, and then someone from the X Men would be there. And it's like you could do this this way, or you could do it this way. And if you ever choose one way or the other, like you get like faction gate, you get like go towards that side. Like if you choose something for the X Men, it goes like X Men faction gate, and you get go towards lean towards the X Men side of things, like the good side of things, rather than you know the bad side of things for the Brotherhood, though. But right. I do not know why that system is in now because there's no there's, there's no reasoning behind it. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's not like there's going to be a different ending or anything like that. But it doesn't change the story at all. It no, do it's, it doesn't do anything whatsoever. It's it's just completely useless. You know, like something yes. along. It's like you think it'd be something more along the line of you know Mass Effect or Knights of the Republic and things like that now. But no, it's not like that. It's just very. It's just nothing great about it, though. Like, the combat, and it's just your, your standard, you know, brawl or hack and slash, yeah, like, brawl, you're beating them up pretty much, yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's just, you know, it's just, you pretty much fight the same, you know, enemies over and over again. Like, you fight these, like, a um, few different types later on, but it's just kind of the same, you know, enemies, so just not really exciting. And you pretty much fight the same kind of boss, like, three times throughout. Um, including the final boss in the game, um, it's just it's basically this. There's like you fight the, this guy twice in this like kind of max suit thingy, 
big advanced mech suit and then you fight the final boss which is pretty much a different colour palette and it's pretty much like an advanced version of it but it pretty much <laughs> kind of plays the same like you might have a few different attacks though but okay. kind of the same way you knock the shield you knock the shield down and then you basically give him damage and then he has the shield back up again knock the shield down again and avoiding the attacks and that there it's like yep yeah, this is great basically that's well done there having the same kind of pause battle three times throughout the game yeah. yeah, I saw the quick look for that, and it looked fucking horrible. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it whatsoever. It's, it's like I paid like thirteen pound for it, though, and I still think I paid a bit too much for it. Maybe <laughs> would probably paid ten or at most. Yeah, but it's, it's not great though. Like even if you're a fan of the X Men, though, this is not one of those games you recommend playing. Yeah, like. Go and play X Men Origins Wolverine. It's based on the movie though, which is not that great, but it's definitely a better game than this, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, def do not pick that up. It's not recommended whatsoever. It's it's just average at best, mediocre. Um, I haven't played much of Dishonored and XCOM Enemy Unknown either since we've last done a podcast. So, like, I played a bit of multiplayer with da- Dennis, um, mm-hmm. like after we did the last one. Yeah. And played a few matches of it, which was fun though, but that's pretty much all i played of it since <laughs> two weeks ago. Okay. And the Sonnet though, I've already done the first mission, and like after listening to the bombcast, I wanted to go more stealthy though, and therefore it took me longer to do that first mission, which is the one you have to kill that overshoot camel guy. Mm-hmm. It took me a lot of hours just to try to go through it and not kill anyone, like, you know, choke them out or something, and then, you know, evade enemies and, you know, have to use blink and things like that now, and, you know, get over to cam and not kill him now, and just, you know, go around it the, the non-lethal way, which yeah. I'm sure you didn't do that now, Dennis, did you? You probably just whopped, <laughs> whopped up and um, yep. killed his ass. Actually, and, uh... When uh, I was trying to go stealthy on him, I, I went upstairs, and I was trying to, to go stealthy, and he just fucking came through the door, and, hey, there he is. I was like, okay, well, what the fuck? <laughs> I was trying to to go stealthy, and he just blasted through the door and started shooting at me, so I had no choice but to kill him. So. Yeah. Pretty much the way it went for that fucking game in my in my side. So. Yeah, but you'll talk a bit more about it, though, once we when yeah. you get into our games. Um, yeah. But, like, I did that there because, like, there was the, the little side um, optional thing as well as, like, you see if the other guy was with him because the Campbell guy is, wants to po- is, is going to poison Captain Carno now. Yeah. Basically, you can have, have a chance to let him do it or pretty much save his life. And I did that there. I did both. I, like, I choked him out, though. But the thing is, you have to wait a bit, though. Like, he, I smashed the glasses and then just looked, wait up in the, like, near the ceiling now and I had to follow them down to the secret room. And yeah. basically, once the um, overshoot camel, he has to open this code thing, is, and then you basically have to choke him out when camel, to choke the other guy out when he's not looking, and then basically then choke him out, leave him there in his secret room, and then you have to take Kuno to this secret, um, this uh, drop-off point, which is basically a dumpster outside that like building you're in, mm-hmm. which was a bit annoying, though, because you have to avoid the guards, they're still out there now. Um... There's a few, like, near that dumpster as well. And then you have to go and take the, um... You have to get this thing that's called the Heretics brand. And yeah, I saw that. Mm-hmm. You have to go to the interrogation room. You have to bring them to the interrogation room, put them in the chair, and then brand them with the Heretics brand. And that's the null weasel way to um, finish that mission then. That's the way I did it. Now, I want to do that with all of the, you know, the targets you have to face now. Yeah. Um, like I did a bit of the Pendleton one though, but like I haven't really. But that's like nearly two weeks ago now since I played the game. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah. I don't know what I think about that game. It's good and all though, but I don't know. It's just I just <laughs> I don't. I'm kind of a bit indifferent to it at the moment though. Like I, I think it looked like the city and all looks nice. Dunwall looks nice, but I don't know. It's <laughs> something about it just. I don't, I don't yep. know, I don't, I'll, I'll try more of it though in the future, but that's all I have to say about it. Okay. Um, Borderlands 2, I did play some with Dark though, which was quite a lot of fun. I'm level 16 now, I believe, so 
think um, you're 17 or 18. Was I? Yeah, I think you're 18. Okay. My memory again. Maybe I'm, I think it could be 17 or 18. Um, I done. I just done that train to catch mission. The mission where basically sanctuary is getting blown to hell and it goes up in the sky, which I believe what Derek told me is like kind of like the end of the first act. Yeah. Of the pretty game. much. And then we did, I did actually did a few of the um, side quests afterwards. So and then that was the last time we played it there. Um, You're still a ways away from finishing yeah, the game. A lot. <laughs> I actually asked Derek that about how much more do you have to do, and he says, "Yeah, you still have another good number of hours to do." So, oh yeah, like 20, oh, yeah. 20 hours. Yeah, twenty thirty hours. So, still have a long ways to go. If you're gonna do all the side quests, yeah. Yeah, I, I did that with the first game though. So I did pretty much every single quest in the first game's campaign now. So I'd pretty much do the same here now. Um, I really actually gotten really back into it though again. Decided to go back in it after the little break I had from it and I really do like that game now it is really fun now so some of the guns in it are cool and I like the variety of locations in this one now more than I did the first one because the first one was just fucking deserts now so it was yeah. um, I believe that's the like main thing in the DLC isn't it Derek like it's pretty much a desert landscape yeah it is yeah there's some some different some slightly different locations uh, in there, but uh, it's mostly uh, like a big desert. There's, you know, you start you start in the oasis uh, where you have the character that looks like Johnny Depp from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. If you've seen that movie, <laughs> I've not. He's uh, he gives you a bunch of the quests at the beginning there. Okay, okay. But um, yeah, it, it's definitely worth worth the DLC uh, for sure. Um, I think it's pr- I think it's probably better than uh, the Zombie Island DLC when you're comparing the first okay. the first one you know the first DLC from the first game and the first one from this game. And like the second one was like there as well uh, shortly after the release of the first one, which is basically it's going to be like Capital of Car- Campaign of Carnage or something I think it's called. Yeah, yeah, I really hope that's not like a Mad Max thing from the first game. <laughs> from from the name of it though alone it does sound like yeah. it'll be something like that though, which yeah. I hope's not the case because that campaign was not fun whatsoever, that DLC. Like yeah. whenever none of us even finished it because it was just so fucking boring. Yeah. It was. Yeah. So hopefully Gearbox learned their lesson and don't do anything like that again. Um That's a Dark Souls got its DLC this week, which I know PC players got, if they've got the Prepare to Die edition, I've been playing it for the last, you know, two months now, but it finally hit this week now, so it did, and now our tangent rant here, of course, I've done it every bloody week now, I've got a bone to pick with PSN, Um, the fact of the matter is, look at that, you haven't tried the new PS store yet, have you? <coughs> No. no, no, it. I don't like it. I do not like it. It's it, to me. It just feels a bit too similar, a bit sim, a bit similar to the Xbox 360, though. But I do not like it whatsoever. The fact of the matter is, the stupid thing is, it says latest. You know, has like you know latest or you know all or latest add-ons or whatever, and like the old sort of setup. Though you scroll through it and has at the end of it though latest add-ons. It has. Red Dead Redemption's Undead Nightmare, which to me I find funny considering the fact is that thing is like two years old at this point, and they have ha- have it in the latest section. Um, anyway, I got the Toys of the Abyss DLC, which is like ten pound, and I played about an hour of it though, and it's yep, it's more Dark Souls. Hard as hell, but still fucking brilliant. That's pretty much all I'm going to say about it, because I know you guys sure. couldn't care less about Dark Souls as much as I do. Um, I know Dennis will never, talk, will never touch that game with a 50-foot pole. Nope. Um, I don't know about you, Derek, now. I'm sure you're probably the same way. I rented it just to see what all the hubbub was about, and I didn't like dying every five seconds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I know you're supposed to die, because that's part of the game, but... Whatever. Yeah, I think okay. the whole yeah, but like I I I do I loved it though. Like I played some of Demon Souls. I thought it was pretty good though, but it's really really enjoyed Dark Souls though. 
But yeah, this is basically a new area though, and like there's a few new bosses and a few new enemies though. Um, so it's like it's like I'm probably playing this. Um, I don't know how big it is now. I don't think it's very long. So I'll probably play it over next week and see if I can finish it and do most of the stuff in it, and then you know probably put down Dark Souls again for another while, and you know mm. never touch it again. Yeah. Um, but like I love I love that game though. It's awesome. Crisis I played a bit off on the Xbox 360 and I finally got plus past the bloody point that was annoying me big time because I kept going back to it every so often and trying to do this little part and kept fucking dying because um, the checkpoints in that game are not really that forgiven sometimes because you can go through like five minutes without getting a checkpoint and then dying and have new, not the five minutes again so it's not like the PC version where you can save any time so that's um, all right. Kingdoms of Avalor Reckoning, I went back to a bit there because I don't know if you guys, have any of you guys followed, followed Rich Gallop on Twitter? Yeah, I saw the auction for, uh, uh, for 30 Gate Studios. Yeah, because I was following, like, he was posting a lot of pictures of, like, items on the auction sale, and I pretty mm. much, <laughs> thanks to <clears> that there, pretty much I just got in the mood to go back and play that game again for a bit, though. Yeah, it's a great game. I play like a pie pet an hour for the at the most though, so yeah, it's that's a good game. Um, I would say my top ten the game of the year because I don't I don't haven't gotten anywhere near towards the end because I'm busy too mm-hmm. busy doing the DLC at the moment. The um, oh what the fuck's it called? Then one of them's called the Thief of Naros. It's not that one. It's the other one. I forget what's called though. Um. Happy Wars, which I just played a bit of. It's that free-to-play Xbox Live Arcade multiplayer game, which uh, um, is all right. It kind of looks, like no looks like Fat Princess, so it does for the PS3. Yeah. Um, it's basically you play like you, you can choose one of the three different classes now, and then you go through them and fight enemies. And basically, your objective is to go into the other team's castle and destroy their tower. And you could build, like, destroy these other towers and the um, in like the process, though, and like make them your like spawn points. Then things like that. It's just, it's just your typical sort of one of those deathmatch kind of games, one of those like conquest or deathmatch kind of games that you've seen all before, though, with a like um, cutesy art style to it. Song pop, still playing it. Not as much as I used to, though, because I think Dennis is the only one now that I play with, along with Liam. <clears throat> yeah. That's it. I know Derek's pretty much done with that game, so he is. Yeah. Derek abandoned yep. the ship. Fuck that game. <laughs> <laughs> um, any of you that uh, Retro City Rampage, I decided to get now, and the thing is, a lot of people were quite, like, um, interested in this game now. And they were like mm-hmm. seeing what this game's all about now, and I think it's pretty much been forgotten because it didn't get great reviews. I think, yeah, the hype died. <laughs> I think I think a lot of people. I think I think it's probably it's one of those games. that's, I think the ref the the style of it's probably good, like the whole references and things like that is better. Um, maybe was it substance over style or style over substance, whatever way mm-hmm. it is. And it's probably it's pretty much one of those games for people. Because there's a lot of references, like you play, like there's a guy, Doc Shock, like kind of Dr. Emmett Brown, you know, yeah. Back to the Future, and like there's these little parts where like kind of like one of them's like, you know, Metal Gear, and like you fight this guy, he's like Beyond Commando, Express Robocop, and like I would play like the first maybe 10, 15 minutes of it though, so, but that seems alright though, but I like, I like a lot of people have shoved it to the side now, because oh, yeah, mm-hmm. moved on because of the Hotline Miami. Yeah. And I might pick it up, though, but not at the moment. Mm-hmm. Because there was a thing in a quick look, though, they're mentioning, like, if you have a certain version of Visual, Visual Studios installed, that the frame rate goes weird. <clears throat> yeah, the game's unplayable. I think. Yeah. And there's no game pad support as well at the moment, which there was supposed to be, but there's some problems with it as well, because if you try to yeah. use game pad, there's problems as well, so I probably will get it when those problems are fixed, although I think there's a few of them been fixed already, since so they seem to be doing pretty good with patches. Yeah. 
So I'll probably wait a while and see. Because I'd rather, actually rather play like guy, a... One guy working on that, right? Yeah, it's one or two. I think it's two guys or something. I'd, rather yeah. just play, I'd, rather, I'd probably rather play that game with a gamepad controller anyway, probably. So i wait till yeah. that, wait till that problem's fixed and then I'll try it out. And last night before I had to work, I decided to put, go back to Spec Ops the Line and I'm on mission 7 now, so I'm nearly at the halfway point. Yep. Chapter nearly. 7. Yep. Again, like I mentioned before, though, it's a, it's a, it's an alright game, so it's like, you know, average gameplay, but interesting story, and then that's, that's, still remains the mm-hmm. thing. So, that's pretty much all I've been playing, from what I can remember, so. Alright. Go ahead, Dennis. Okay. Uh, I think I'm the only person who bought, uh, a new game this week. <laughs> uh, I bought Forza Horizon. I I kind of was on the fence. I was like, do I get it? Do I wait for Need for Speed? So I didn't really know if I wanted to get it or not. So I decided, well, I'll get it. You know, try it out, see how it is. And uh, <clears throat> I am, I'm actually very much enjoying myself. It's actually a very very interesting, uh, good. You know, like if you're used to Forza Horizon, uh, if you're used to the Forza games, I mean, and. Uh, you jump into this. It's a little different, of course, because it's open world. Uh, so you drive from event to event, uh, uh, doing races, doing uh, competitions. Uh, at some point, you're going to race against a hot air balloon. At other moments, you're going to race against a plane. You know, stuff like that. And really? Yeah. That yeah, I did that was, the plane thing. I, I never played the demo, though. I actually might check out the demo because I'm actually interested in checking this out myself. <clears throat> It's it's very very enjoyable. I mean, it's uh, you kind of forget it's a Forza game because you know when I was, I, I was playing uh, first couple of races, I was like going all crazy and trying to you know pedal to the metal and trying to pass everybody, but and drifting all that stuff. Yeah, you you su- you soon remember that it's a Forza game and that you have to put on the brakes a little bit and slow down and turn in tight corners and yeah. all that. So. You kind of remember that, and you're like, oh, okay, i got to slow down here. So, uh, but uh, honestly, it's, it's, it's very good. It's a, it's a pretty good game. Uh, the graphics are surprisingly quite awesome. So, uh, uh, I mean, I was very surprised that, uh, as I was saying, I think I tweeted that, the, the fact when you first start off, you, you get to Horizon, uh, Horizon is the festival that's taking place in the game, and you get to Horizon uh, at night, and you see like the big stage that's lit and all the fireworks going off, and you know it's just pretty damn awesome just seeing that at night and all the pretty pretty impressively pretty impressive graphics uh, uh, for this game. Uh, the racing's solid. Uh, it's kind of you know it's kind of tricky at first when you start. Uh, the cars are kind of a little tricky to handle, and I can see where uh, Derek was coming from when he said he tried he tried the uh, the, um, the demo and he wasn't sure about the whole car handling thing. It's kind of hard, especially the fucking mon- the the uh, muscle cars. Yeah, Those fucking cars are really hard to drive, like really hard to drive. Yeah, you just have to you know slow down a little bit and take a like watch out in curves and you know take your time and all that. Uh, and the cars that are really hard to, to race because I'm I'm pretty far ahead now in the game. I'm like uh, I'm competing for the pink re- uh, pink wristbands because you it's 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 a little bit like um, Gran Turismo. It's like you have to compete for for different uh, echelons, I guess, of the competition, and you have to do a couple of races to get through that. And uh, I'm now competing for the pink uh, wristband. And it's like you're racing S series cars, and my God, those fucking cars are fast. It's like you're going, you're going really, really fast, and then you, you have to turn like almost 90 degrees, in a turn, and so you hit the, the uh, the handbrake and all that, and then you just spin out of control and go crazy. So it's so a little bit tougher for for those cars, but, um, and what's really cool, I. When I put the game in, started playing, and they said, "Since you're a, a Forza fan, here are a couple of cars that we give to you." So it kind of 
detected that I had played Forza 3 and 4. Mm-hmm. And it said, hey, here, here are a couple of cars as gifts and got some fucking sweet cars from that. So that was, that was pretty cool. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very much enjoying the game. It's really, really fun. Uh, a little back, there's a little story going on, uh, at the same time. You know, it's a little bit like, uh, uh, Need for Speed, um, most wanted, like the first Need for Speed was wanted, when you have a little backstory, like you're racing against these guys and trying to beat them, and some are really uh, real assholes and all that. So, you know, you're trying to beat them and move up into rankings and all that. So, very, very, very enjoyable game. I'm really, really liking it. Um, never thought I'd, you know, appreciate it as much as I do, but it's fun. It's really fun. Uh, achievements are, are easy as hell to get, so <laughs> if you're looking for achievements, <laughs> uh, get Forza Horizon because, uh, they're pretty easy to get. Uh, you just have to play the game and you pretty much get a ton of achievements. I already have 20 achievements, so 20 or 21, something like that, out of 50, so pretty easy to get these achievements in the game. Uh, highly recommended if you, uh, if you like, uh, car games. Yeah, uh, I'll probably play that. I'll probably get the demo first and see if it's... Yeah, but I probably will get it, though. Um, the whole, you know, you know, graphics there, like the user interface and all that stuff, you know, like when you see, like, you know, races and, like, the people in the race and all that, they're all that, you know, the, that to mm-hmm. me is just so reminiscent of Dirt 2. Yeah. Yeah, but it is. It does look definitely. like the graphics package, yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. not that's not really surprised. It's like few people who I think worked on Dirt or work yeah. work on this few Codemaster guy. So mm-hmm. that to me is not really surprised. But it definitely looks reminiscent of Dirt, and I really like Dirt and Dirt Two. I haven't played much of Dirt Three though, but I really do like the first two Dirt games. I think it's a mix of uh, like it's a mix of Forza, Dirt. Get a little bit of Dirt in there. Get a bit of uh, Test Drive Project and Gotham. It. People. Test Drive a little bit. Gotham. Uh, Project Gotham Racing, uh, you get kudos actually when yeah, you Yeah, because there's a few bizarre, bizarre that way. Yeah, a few bizarre yeah. ones as well, working on as well, so. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, you know, coming from all those guys, you can expect a pretty good racing game, so. That, that's what it is, it's really fun. Like, it's really arcade-ish, like there's no, uh, uh, it's not like Forza, uh, like, uh, three or four, you know, it's not, not like deep, uh, Deep racing stuff, you know, it's more, you race in the dirt and you race uh, everywhere, so, it's, it's really enjoyable, it's really fun. Um, guess I should talk about XCOM. I played a whole ton of XCOM actually, before I got, um, Forza Horizon, and that, and that took up most of my time uh, last week, but, uh, I played a whole ton of XCOM. Um, I'm actually doing pretty well. I actually have guys not that are, that are, that have, uh, psychic powers. Some of my soldiers have, uh, psychic powers now. So that's pretty cool. I'm upgraded my guns to plasma. So that makes it a whole lot easier. Um, uh, I have two soldiers that are max. One sniper and one, uh, uh, one heavy that are maxed out. Um, my Canadian heavy is maxed out and renamed them after me, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, yeah, very, very awesome game. Uh, one of my favorite games of the year, actually. Um, very strategic, because as you move along in the game, the enemies get tougher. Of and course. Tougher and tougher. So, uh, one point you're facing, like, these big saucer things, and you have the, the... I don't know how they call them, really, but there's, like, these big spider... Spider aliens that come at you. Chrys- and are they called chrysalids? Yeah, the chrysalids, yeah. Lots of their organisms. They come at you, and if your soldier is surrounded by, like, two or three of them, you're, you're, you're dead in the water. You're pretty much done there. Uh, because one of them will attack you, and either they poison you and you die, or they transform you into a zombie. And, you know, you fight against your own soldiers and all that. And there's a couple of aliens that have mind control, turn your soldiers against you. So if you have a very uh, highly, a very high ranked soldier and he starts attacking your own squad, that's pretty tough. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's getting, it's getting pretty tough, but it's still a whole lot of fun. 
like I'm, I'm at the point now that I do a turn, I save, I do a turn, I save, I do a turn, I save. So it's pretty much saving all the time. But very, very good game. Very, very good game. Like I never thought I would enjoy this game as much as I do, but awesome, awesome, awesome game. If yeah, yeah. There's a person on another podcast, and I listened to pretty much talked about it as well. Though this was like a couple of weeks ago, though, and he basically mentioned the fact is that the only way you should play this game is basically do the Iron Man mode on it. Which I, I, when I heard that, I was like, "Fuck, fuck you! No way! I'm gonna do that." Though, like, sure, if it's the way you want to play, go ahead. But that's basically mm-hmm. just basically stating that the way is like, no, I'm not doing that way. Like Iron Man mode is kind of like the you know, hardcore mode or something like that now, where you just, like, have the one save or whatever, and, like, yeah. um, no, it's pretty much that way. There's, like, I never do that way, no way. Yeah, when my friend's uh, at work, actually, is playing XCOM, he finished the game, and he's now playing on the Iron Man mode. Um, where he restarted and playing on Iron Man mode. Yeah, but, like, if you finish the game now, go ahead and do that, though, but I wouldn't do it my first time through Especially with the fact is, like, I never do, because the fact is, this is one of my first, like, you know, strategy games that I actually enjoyed playing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm playing on easy, so, I mean, even on easy, I, a couple of times, had to reload my game because I was getting wiped out really, really easily. So, you know, you have to reload the game and think of another strategy and go in another way and all that. It's It's very interesting. Very interesting. Very, very good game. Is there any any of your countries got that yet? Yeah, I have uh, Brazil. Brazil's gone. But uh, once you do, there's a couple of missions. I don't think you got to that mission, but you have to invade an, uh, an enemy base. No, I heard it's pretty hard, though. It is fucking hard. <laughs> and I mean, really, really hard. Even on easy. I, I lost... Um, like, I have a, squ- a full squad now. I have six soldiers. Um, I went in, all my soldiers, like, really, really maxed out. Well, two, two maxed out, and, like, four of the four others are very close to me maxing, maxed out. And I, I got out of there, I got out of there with two soldiers. <laughs> and it's really, really tough. It is very tough. Uh, but once you get through that, you're, uh, and you don't want to play Dark Souls? <laughs> <laughs> it's different. It's very different. Because uh, you can take your time, right? Yeah, you can take your time. You can say, and if it's your turn, you can take your time to check out your strategy and map out the way you want to go and all that. But uh, yeah, once you clear, once you clear the enemy base, like uh, the, the alert, the alertness goes way down. Like you go like to two dots or something everywhere. So. It's, that helps a whole lot to to do that. So, <clears throat> sorry, very very good game. Uh, if anyone's interested in that, um, yeah. I've also played. Uh, go ahead, Darren. No, no, no it's green with you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I also played a little game. I saw a quick look on uh, Giant Bomb about it, and I said, "Oh, I'm gonna buy it." You know, support these guys. Only ten bucks. So. Uh, I'll check it out. It's a uh, cook, serve, delicious. I don't know if you guys saw the quick look for that. I enjoyed the quick look, but there's no way in hell I would enjoy that game. <laughs> that's just not, just, that's just not just, my kind of game. I just briefly glanced at it, though, but didn't really watch it thoroughly, so I don't really know what the hell it's all about. I enjoyed it for the comments, like, you know, like, oh, it's 8 o'clock in the morning and you're getting beers. <laughs> <laughs> the whole uh, that happens during the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Um, I actually downloaded it. I said I'm going to try it out. You know, it's it seems frantic. It seems a little tough, but uh, there's not really a way that you can lose. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you can get customers that aren't satisfied, but you you'll just you know progress uh, at a slower pace. But you don't you can't really lose in the game. So um, I do- I downloaded it, tried it out, tried it out, and it's very very good. I, I really enjoy it. Uh, it gets redundant, like it gets really repetitive, but um, I stopped playing it completely because it was getting a little bit repetitive, but for a $10 game, it's it's fun. It's really fun. Uh, when you get to the rush hour point, when everybody comes in at the same time, 
Like I'm a two-star restaurant now, and I have like five people can order at the same time. And when when they come in five orders at the time at the same time, and you're going from one to the other, and you can't play this with a controller, you have to play with your keyboard or with your mouse. Man, it gets it get it gets really crazy. It gets really really frantic. So basically, you have to like get orders, and you pretty much have to do them, and pretty much give them to the right person. Then is that it? No, you, you, I mean you you have to like let's say first person comes in, <clears throat> and this person wants a hamburger. So he's going to say, okay, I want a hamburger with um, tomatoes, lettuce, and they have to press the buttons that correspond to the letters of the uh, the things that they want. Like if they want beer, you have to pour beer, but don't pour it too much, or they don't, you know, they won't be satisfied. Or if you don't pour it the the entire glass, they won't be unsatisfied either, or stuff like that. And if you miss uh, if you miss uh, an item, like everything's going at the same time, you have a time limit to fill out the the order that they want. If you don't fill out the order, they're they're going to get mad, and uh, customers won't be happy, and all that stuff. So. It, you should watch a quick look. It's a little hard to explain like this, but it's uh, it gets really hectic. It gets really crazy once you uh, you get into the the tough stuff. Like uh, two, I got I got to a two star restaurant and already it's it's really insane. But you have to like use like the arrow keys on your keyboard or something. Yeah, you have to use the arrow keys. You have to use the letters, the numbers, and you have to if if you don't have your if you can't. I mean. I don't know how you say this, but if you can't type fast enough, you're pretty much screwed. Like you have to know you you have to know keyboard. You have to know where the letters are and stuff on the keyboard, right? Yep, layout of your keyboard. You really have to know it because you're pretty much screwed. And I tried playing with the mouse and forget it. It's really tough with the mouse. So it's playable with the mouse, but it's really tough. So you have to know the layout of your keyboard, where the G, you know, the letters are, and all that stuff. So, so when you're like. Say somebody wants a soda, you have to like press a button to pick the cup up, and then you have to press it to like align it with the right slot, and then another button. Usually, it's like I think it's like an arrow button, isn't it, or is it one of the letters to fill up the soda? I've seen, you know, I watched the quick look, and that it seems like you got to do things in a certain order, and you got to do them in a certain timing as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fuck that game. <laughs> Just want a uh, like a, a jumbo uh, cola with ice and flavor blast, so you have to. Press your arrows to get a, a a jumbo cup. Fill it with your 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 cola. Put the ice in. Put the flavor blast in. Press enter to to send it off. And when you get into the the fucking pizza or the the hamburgers, oh my god, that that gets really crazy. Because as you upgrade your food, like if you say, let's say if you upgrade your hamburger, you're gonna have more choices for your hamburger. So you have to press shift to go into the other options. Like there's going to be a whole ton of options like special sauce or uh, tomatoes, lettuce, onions, and all that. And you have to press shift and go into that, and it gets really, really crazy. It gets really crazy. But those kinds of foods is what gives you the most money. Like people will tip a whole lot on that, those foods and all that. So uh, the, the tougher foods to make give you a whole lot of money. And the easy foods like beer or, uh, let's say, uh, you can make uh, French fries. You just have to dip the French fries in and then serve them. And that's pretty much it. That's really easy to make. But uh, those types of foods don't give you a whole lot of money. So. Is this on Steam, is it? It's not on Steam, no. Oh, right. You not have to get on their site then, I presume. <clears throat> you get on their site or you, I bought it on um, Gamers Gate. So right. you can get it. It's it's in the green light, uh, the green uh, what they call it, green light, on Steam. Yeah. That you can uh, you you can uh, you know upgrade if you want to see the game released on Steam, you can go vote for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So it's it's there for that, but it's it's not available yet on Steam. So uh, I recommend it if you have the nerves and the patience. <laughs> Is there any <laughs> demo for? Yeah, there's a demo. Oh, yeah. I, I think I might try the demo and say then, see if, it, if I can keep up with it. Yeah, try the demo. It's I, I kind of bought it on a whim, like it was last Saturday night. I was okay. Well, I wanna, I kind of want to try this out and 
you know, bought it for ten bucks. It's ten bucks, not really expensive, and it helps the guys out. So that's pretty cool, you know. So uh, it's a good game. It it gets really hectic, but it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, what else? I'm gonna save the uh, I guess quote unquote best for last. <laughs> um, I've also played a little bit of Saints Row the Third. As I said, I, I went back into that game, downloaded it, and went back to it. I played a little bit more of uh, of it. I mean, I did the uh, Nightblade mission, where you have to you 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 knock him out and you bring him back with you. Did you do the Drakus Drakus Dark Day mission yet? Not yet. I haven't okay. gotten to it. Darn it! Do that mission I, again. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is. Little like a very very little of it. Uh, uh, I di- I haven't done any of the um, activities or anything like that. Just playing straightforward in the story, and I got to a point where I just got mowed down because you know when you do the the activities you can get you, you can upgrade faster. So I haven't done any of those. So I'm kind of still very low on on the upgrading. So twelve or something like that. So it's not very high, and I kind of got pretty much owned. So I said, yeah. I kind of don't want to do the activities, so I'm just gonna leave that for now. <laughs> just gonna put it aside. So, uh, Rock Band Blitz went back into that a little bit uh, this week. Uh, when you don't play that game for a while, <laughs> you kind of lose uh, the feeling or the you know the touch for the the game. And uh, I downloaded a couple of songs. There are new songs I downloaded. Played them, and I couldn't even like three or four star any song so I said yeah I can I'm kind of done with it for now so but it's still a very good game one of my favorites of uh, of the year actually uh, song pop uh, played that a little bit with the what you mean song poop like yeah. you put on the thing here yeah. <laughs> yeah I put song poop that's how I call it uh, um, play a little bit of that I'm playing with my sister and uh, Art Green and you Darren uh not a whole lot. Did you finally pretty... unlock any other categories, or do you, have, do you still have to wait to get more coins? <laughs> like, coins away, and nobody's fucking playing the game anymore, so I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> my sister stopped playing, uh, Darren doesn't play much, uh, and other people I was playing against just stopped playing completely. <laughs> I always, yeah, I don't really see the point of playing it, though, if you don't really have much people to play with. Like, I always do, and, like, Liam. We can play with really random it. people. But yeah, but sometimes yeah, but I rather just play with people I know though, rather than like randoms. Yeah, I ended up playing with the randoms, and I don't, I didn't mind it, but I I just got sick of it. I I never really had fun. It was more like a chore or like a like I gotta you know I want to try and beat this person type thing. It wasn't really fun. The problem is though, if you get with randoms as well, especially like sometimes you might get someone and then that and then you might do their game and then they never fucking play then either well they then just, you and then if that's the case then you win at the end of the week and you, you're one power up from it yeah, yeah. but like that to me it's just stupid anyway but uh, randoms you mean random on your friends list no you can so start like, random ma- or random, random, random but uh, match with you know random people really I yeah, didn't you even know that. yeah I didn't know that I'm gonna have to check it out you could do it See. you could do it in the games like draw something and all those kind of games as well okay yeah. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even know that. So, might check it out because I kind of want to get to three ninety nine. I'm at three eighty nine right now. <laughs> so, I want to ninety nine and get uh, unlock uh, wrestling or something else. Maybe movie uh, movie themes or something like that. So, because not a whole lot of people are into wrestling. So, <laughs> what if they have Goldberg's theme in there? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I haven't heard it though. Uh, from why it's mostly just WWE stuff, pretty much. That sucks. It's more the fucking current stuff as well. Like there's a few older tracks, so it's mostly the current, current ones of the like yeah, last several years. years. I, I haven't. I don't think I've come across it. Wow, that that really sucks. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, it's more the wrestlers. I think Bret Hart is in there and like a few other ones but that's really it. Like it's mostly like current stuff like The Miz and you know John Cena and those kind of ones. 
Or CM Punk. Yeah, CM Punk's like both of them are there. Like his Mike Kirsch, um, you know, Kill Switch Engage and the Cult of Personality. Yeah. You mean um, this fire burns, not Mike Kirsch. Oh yeah, sorry, I said yeah. <laughs> uh-uh. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm playing a little bit of that, and last but certainly not least, I finished Dishonored uh, last weekend, I think. And there's one thing I have to say about this game, and it's fuck this game. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it! This is pretty much because you know I have I have a gripe with um with the entire marketing campaign for this game. You know, it's like oh, okay, well, hey, here's the game, and oh, you don't have to play it stealth. You can play it. You know, you can go in there and kill people if you want to. There's no problem. You know. It's, you can play it the way you want, and then first thing you do when you load up the game, and you're in the prison, and they tell you, "Oh, if you kill these, ima- the, if you kill people, you're gonna have more rats, and you gotta have more of those zombie type things that go around and spit stuff at you, and uh, if you do that, you're gonna get more of that, and you're gonna get a bad ending." Yeah, it's just basically the place that's gonna get worse. Yeah. So I'm like, what the? F-? Okay, well, okay. so I'm, I, I. I go ahead and I try to do my stealthy stuff, you know, get past guards without being noticed or anything. And then I'm not the type of guy who's going to reload his game and try again and reload and try again. That's unfortunately what I did. So I just, you know, I got to, yeah, I go to a certain place and I do all this, like I pass a ton of guards without them seeing me. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing well here. And save the game, okay, it's pretty cool. So, then I get to a place, one guard spots me, and I, I shoot him with a tranquilizer dart, and he falls, so I didn't kill him. And then all of a sudden, all the other guards come around. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I'm stuck with all the other freaking guards coming around and trying to kill me, so... What you end up doing is you kill all the guards, and that's pretty much it. So you, there goes your chaos for that for that level and all that, so you kind of, I kind of ended up killing everybody, so well, pretty much everybody, so that kind of fucked up my ending, <laughs> and I got the uh, worst, I think the worst ending of the game, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, especially, yeah, because like that's the thing. Now, if you go through the game without killing a lot of people, you can get the low chaos rating, and then there's like the high chaos rating. Mm-hmm. Mine, like, I just did the first few missions, so mine's still currently at low since, like, I've killed, like, I, I think I might kill maybe one or two people, and a few people in the, that mission I did with Overshade Campbell, and, like, mm-hmm. basically, you know, um, having any civilian casualties. Remember, no, actually, remember that one, actually, that one with the woman, the maid or something, and I knocked her over, thought she was dead? Yeah. No, that that wasn't a civilian casualty then, because I, I got zero, I think, when I looked at the stats at the end of that mission, then I was like, thank goodness. Mm-hmm. So that's basically as well, if you kill like a lot of civilians or whatever as well, if you kill a few civilians and the like, guards not there, it's, your case rating will go up as well, so basically yeah. just try to avoid and all that stuff. Yeah, and I, I'm not very high on stealth games, you know, I'm, I don't really enjoy them a whole lot, so... It's kind of me being stealthy in this game is like, uh, you know, I thought I could do like do sex, uh, human revolution thing where if I want to be stealthy, I'll be stealthy. And if I want to take out my guns and shoot everybody or kill everybody, I can do so. And it's not going to affect my, my ending or anything like that. So this game does that. It affected my ending completely. So I got the bad ending and I said, yep, yeah, well, fuck this game. You know, it's like, <laughs> I don't want to go back and redo the fucking uh, another playthrough and try not to kill everybody and you know spend like five hours on a on a single uh, mission and all that. So not very interested in doing that. So the game does look fantastic. It does have great ideas and all that, but I think the whole killing not killing thing wasn't done very well, in my opinion. Yeah, that's pretty much um kind of what Ben from the Rad Rascals problem was when he talked about his first impressions with it there is like 
he's kind of feels he basically get rewarded more for being stealthy rather than you know basically going the way you want to play it though. But I do yeah. find it devious. So the fact is, you can go through this the stealth way. Like one of the first videos to put out was that you can put this the first. You could do this mission the stealth way where you try to avoid the guards and have to take them out non lethally now, or you could just go in guns blazing and kill everyone. And then yeah. basically the comp the when you play the game it's like oh wait a minute. You basically reward you more with achievements and things like that if you be more stealthy and you'll get the better ending if you be more stealthy. And yeah. some people do not like stealth games whatsoever. And they prefer yeah. to go in like, you know, basically play it more like a standard first person shooter where they go in or melee game and, you know, kill everyone and not avoid anyone whatsoever. Yeah, if I like if I if I would have known it was this type of game, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. Honestly, because uh, I'm I do not like stealth games whatsoever, so I don't think I would have picked it up at all if it was that. So I don't I don't know. I think you you Darren, you kind of enjoy it. Yeah, I enjoyed it for what I have played of it thus far, though. But like again, again, it took me a while to do that first mission because I kept like fucking up and loading up my save. Though, therefore, it took me longer than it should be if I just acted the way you did and just go in and kill everyone. Like it would have taken me easily half the time yeah but like I'm going to try and be more just try like I'd rather, rather do it that way though rather than like you know going guns blazing like I have if I have to kill a person now like every so often I'll do it though but I'm not going to go and do it all the time now or else I'll just get a crap ending like yourself yeah well that's just, you know you get the very bad ending if you you go on ahead and kill everybody so I don't know it's it's and I didn't particularly enjoy the game very much. You know, it, it was all right. I mean, it's an all right game, but I, did, I wasn't really crazy about it. So you I think it's also. overrated then? In my opinion, I think it's overrated. Yeah, I, I actually do. How does it compare to Deus Ex, Human Revolution, as far as, like, the stealth and the, uh, you know, letting you just go in guns blazing and stuff? Well, Deus Ex, you know, Deus Ex, if I fucked up, like if I got caught, I could easily put a, pull out my guns and shoot everybody, and it didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But if I got caught and dishonored, you know, I'd feel, I'd feel like really bad, and I was like, oh, fuck, I have to kill everybody now. And then go ahead and kill people and kill the, the soldiers and all that, and ended up saying, oh, crap, you know, I, I fucked up. You know? So in Dishonored, you didn't want to kill anybody, but in Deus Ex, you didn't give a shit if you killed anybody. Yeah, in Dishonored, I was like, okay, I'm going to try to do it stealthy-like. Because the fact is, in um, Dishonored, that affects the ending, whereas in Deus Ex, it doesn't. So yeah. that's pretty much the reason why he's saying not now, I believe. Yeah, in Deus Ex, it doesn't affect anything. If you kill people or if you don't kill people, it doesn't do anything. For, for your ending, for your game, for... But if you do it in Dishonored, you know, it ends up... Uh, uh, you, you get the bad ending, and you have more more rats to contend with, like more uh, groups of rats go around. What do, the, what do the rats do? They, they basically eat... Like, if you if there's a bunch of rats nearby, and if, like, um, a soldier comes or something, or you, if you jump into them, they basically devour you, then they, like, take off your health and not the... Like, there's one of the opening parts of the game where you're escaping the uh, prison, where he's, um, I think the two soldiers open up the, this door, and then there's a bunch of rats there, and they just come and fucking, like, overrun them and just eat them alive, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what causes the plague then, because it's like a... Dunworld's like basically plagued with rats. Yeah. And then there's, like, these zombie, like, these zombie things, like Dennis mentioned there come around as well and you have to like kill them off and I think that's yeah. probably the reason that's kind of what like the root cause of those zombie things because of the whole like plague as well mm -hmm. so can you use the rats to your advantage yeah you can there's a power that you can summon rats which uh, once that was pretty much you know done with the whole stealth thing I purchased that and started using it like you bring up rats and they don't attack you but they attack the uh, the soldiers so that's what I did. Yeah, and you can like put, and you could possess like rats as well to go through like these certain tunnels and like possess other people as well. That's another yeah, the, power up. I never did, uh, possess people one because that takes like 
I think it's eight ruins or nine, nine ruins that you have to pick up and to level up that. It's pretty, uh, that's a whole lot of ruins. Like, that's like two, two complete levels or something like that, so, yeah. So is this game very story focused or is it just kind of like go around and kill everybody? I mean, or, yeah, or but, not. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the story isn't that great. Yeah, from what I've played it thus far, it just seems pretty, you know, pretty standard though. Like you're pretty much, you're pretty much framed for, in the story, pretty much you're pretty much framed for killing the like the empress at the start of the game, mm -hmm. and uh, you're basically set in the prison. You're set to die. You're basically um, sentenced to death, and then you basically get escaped. Though, and you, the like daughter of the empress as well is taken by the get the guys. You pretty much framed you, and you pretty much have to get her back as well. And are these kind of like these guys, these like rebels, going to try to help you out though, to and then kill these targets. Um, along the way, kill these certain certain key targets. So in a way, it's kind of like Assassin's Creed, not sort of yeah. thing though, where you have to kill these certain key targets. But yeah. um, and the difference between that and Assassin's Creed is you have to kill them, whereas in this way you cannot. You can like do it non-lethal way, or you can do it like you just basically go up and kill them. Yep, yeah. that's pretty much. So uh, it's like com the complete opposite of that one trailer that they released when when they first announced it. Pretty much. Where you're, like, kicking ass and using all these powers and stuff. Yeah, pretty much. Like, it, they like discourage that, you from doing that. Yeah, that, that trailer kind of made me think of uh, Bioshock or something. Like, uh, you go in, use these powers to kill everybody, and you're like, wow, that's just great, you know. And it's completely the opposite of that, so. Huh. You have to be completely stealth if you want to have the best ending and fewer enemies and all that, so. I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of... False marketing a little bit, but anyway, not not my most enjoyable, my, not the game I enjoyed the most this year. I gotta say, <laughs> I thought I would love it, but not really. Didn't really enjoy it. I might pick it up again, like soon, like maybe when I'm off and try to go through it. Then, how many mm. missions is it? Like six, is it? Yeah, six missions. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. There's sort of a twist at the end, like a second to last mission. But uh, I saw it coming a mile away, so... I assume, really it's, well, I assume it's with one of the, uh, the Freedom Fighters then, I guess, turns on you or something along those lines. I don't know. I just uh, I assume that's probably the case anyway, because that's usually the case with one, some of those games. Pretty close to that, yeah. Pretty close to that. Spoilers! <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But, yeah, it's semblance, semblance of that, so... Yeah, not one of my favorite games of the year. Not at all, so... Too bad for that. I thought it was more of a Bioshock thing than uh, the game it turned out to be, so... Whatever. I'll, just, I'll just have to wait and see what my thoughts are when I get mm -hmm. to it, then see if I feel the same way as yourself. But, like, I'm playing it differently. I'm playing it stealthy rather than you playing it just basically, you know, guns blazing. But like you said, yeah. you, st you tried to do the stealth way, but you just couldn't get the grips with it, and you're just like, ah, oh, fuck this, I'm not going to spend hours doing this mission where I can just go through it and easily do it, like, in no time then. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But that's it. That's it for me. That's what I played this week. I actually forgot to mention I played Super Mario Land 2 earlier as well, Six Golden Coins, on my 3DS. I got the um, the GB, the, you know, downloaded the Game Boy on the virtual console on the 3DS and played through it and finished it. Mm -hmm. And I, that's the first time I ever played and finished that game though, so it's, it's, it's a really, I really enjoyed it though. It's a cool, you know, portable Mario game from back in the old, back in the day. And it has the first appearance of Wario in the Mario series, so. And he's the final boss in the game, so. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a very good, it's a good game anyway. It's kinda, it's like, it's, it's like kind of like their take on Super Mario World in a way, though, because there's like these secret exits to these uh, exits to these different levels as well, and like different map areas, and you basically have to get these six golden coins to access the final level of the game, which is like Warrior's Castle, and mm -hmm. some of the levels in there. Now some of the levels are pretty standard; they're not that hard though, but there's a few other levels that are, you know, a bit more tricky though. But it's a, it's a good game though, so I'll just have to mention that. Speaking um, of uh, 3DS, are you going to get that Code of Princess game? I don't think it has a release date here yet. Oh, it's not out there. Okay. No, it's not. For my, I, I, I haven't looked it up though, but it's not 
been released here yet. I think it's an Atlas published game, isn't it? I think so, yeah. So in our words, it'll be out here in our eight months' time, no an Atlas. <laughs> uh, I, I would consider buying a 3DS for that game. It looks looks really good. Because I think it's like it's kind of like Guardian Heroes, from what I'm saying of it though. And it so, looks like a like a, a brawler, like Streets of Rage or Final Fight or something. Yeah, it's like a, it's like we have it's like Guardian Heroes. Have you ever played <coughs> Guardian Heroes on the Saturn oh. or that Xbox Live Arcade game? If you look it up, Guardian Heroes, and then look at this, it, 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 I think that's what it looks like. Because I think it's like this: like you, you play in three different planes, um, like Guardian Heroes, or you know something like um, maybe give an example, Little Big Planet, where you have the three different planes. Is that where you can be in the middle, and then you have to go Every back and forth, or go in the forward? It's pretty much it's pretty much like that. But look up gameplay footage of Guardian Heroes, and you you understand what I mean then. <coughs> But no, I don't think it has a release date here. As far as I can recall, I could be wrong though. But it's I think if it's I think it is Atlas is published or something or the that I don't know. But Atlas games tend to take fucking for ages to come out here. Hmm. Like we haven't got a. Um, I know Atlas didn't. Uh, I think they published it in the states though. But I think someone else is publishing it here though. But we haven't got uh, Persona 4 Arena yet. It was supposed to be out in September, but it's not. It's no release date for it yet, and. No, in our luck, it won't be out until fucking, I'll say, probably March at the earliest. So, probably the same thing with the... Well, IGN says it sucks, so I guess it sucks. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what, it's going to Arena? No, a Code of Princess. Oh, but I don't fucking take IGN. They said, if you haven't bought it already, feel free to skip this release. What did they give it, like four You'll be something? missing out on some funny dialogue, sure. But other than that, the only thing that's really attention-grabbing you here is the princess's senselessness and ridiculous, nearly total nudity. 6.9. That's not a completely horrible score, but... Okay, from the edge of what you said there, I thought it was going to be like, you know, four or something. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. I don't go to IGN. I don't go with these anyway, like I imagine, though, but I especially wouldn't go to IGN because... Their it's the first thing that popped up when I typed the, the game. Yeah, their reviews are way over the place. Like, they give... Zelda Skyward Sword of 10 which I completely disagree and the same with Uncharted 3 I completely disagree with it oh, yeah. that's not worth a 10 at all Uncharted 2 is, uh, is the better way game. better oh yeah when I the, the, basically the point why I felt yeah Uncharted Uncharted 2 is, is better was with that shit apart that shit apart mm-hmm. fucking killed Uncharted 3 for me yeah, that was shit. He had it that part, but... No, yeah, that was total garbage. It took me a good hour or two to get through that part alone. Because it didn't really give you a sense of where you had to go as well, and fucking seemed that the enemies seemed to be go surrounding you wherever you're at as well. You had to be really careful. That was kind of the stealth point in that game, in a way, where you had to be mm-hmm. trying to not be alarmed as well, so... Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't really belong there, so... Yeah, I hated that part. Like, the game's, like, still good. No, some other cool points, like the the chateau, like, burning down and escaping. That's pretty cool. Like, the flight there when you're on the plane and that there's class and all. Like, some, like, cool set pieces. <coughs> but, God, that Skyrack, that Shipwreck Gitch part. That's yeah. my, one of my least favorite gaming parts of the last last year, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um... So that's pretty much all. Moving on to what we've been watching, and then we'll give it a day. We're probably here at the two-hour mark anyway, so we'll just yeah, try to... Yeah, we're, we're past it. Yeah. So let's move on here to what we've been watching. So um, we can watch. We can probably talk about a certain thing overall since I start watching a certain series that I know you and Derek very much enjoy watching and mm-hmm. watch the latest series. So we can leave that to last. We can talk maybe a bit more about it together and give you my thoughts on it. So, um, mm-hmm. But let's go with... Uh, I'll let you go first, Dennis. Okay, so I watched uh, Avengers again. <laughs> I, I, I forgot one thing that I'll put down here. Um, I watched uh, the Avengers uh, again, I think, last weekend, last Sunday night. Don't you mean Avengers uh, Assemble? Avengers Assemble or Marvels, the Avengers or whatever the hell. No, it's Avengers called. Assemble over here. That's, <laughs> they find that kind of silly. I don't know. I know yeah. it's the way that they say that though, in like the comic books, like 
mentioned before, but I uh, don't know. They don't even say it, say it in the movies. So yeah, you know. so I still still get it way. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, uh watched it uh, once again, and it's still pretty much my best movie of the year. It's really awesome. Fantastic movie. Uh, you know, it's funny. It's uh, tons of action, especially at the end, and really, really awesome movie. So I don't know if there's still people out there who haven't seen it, but if you haven't, and you like superhero movies or action movies, give it a shot. It's pretty good. Ben just pretty watched good. it there recently as well, and he really enjoyed it, so... Yep. And the trailer for Iron Man 3 came out this week, so... Yeah, it looks interesting. Yeah, looks very interesting. wonder what's going what's gonna to happen there. And, uh, you know, I think Tony Stark loses everything, and uh, he has to rebuild from the ground up, so... See what happens with that. So. Yeah, from people saying it's similar to Dark Knight Rises that way then, because that's kind of the same thing with um, Dark Knight Rises where, you know, Bubbin, he loses everything. Bruce Wayne kind of yeah. loses everything and has to, you know, loses his money. He's pretty much bankrupt and then he fucking Bane beats the shit out of him and he's sent to that, like, prison area and things like that, though, and try to, yeah. you know, recover. So could the be whole. the same thing here. <laughs> Probably we'll see. Well, the the trailer's interesting, and Ben Kingsley as uh, the Mandarin. So interesting, uh, interesting thing there, which means that every villain in every Iron Man movie has to be over fifty. So. <laughs> <laughs> he said that like Rich Gow said that, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, it's like uh, <laughs> Jeff Bridges as uh, what's his name, Obadiah, Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. Yeah. Um, and then I uh, Ben Kingsley. So who'd be next then? Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Harrison Ford, <laughs> Crimson Dynamo. Who's going to be him? Yeah, who's going to be uh, Crimson Dynamo? So we'll have to wait. And I know it's uh, Iron Man four this year, and I think it's Captain America in two thousand fourteen, the second Captain America. So, and I think Adve- Avengers will be in two thousand fifteen. If I'm not mistaken, what Thor that long? <laughs> All right, Thor two. Yeah. Is there a Thor two? Probably. Yeah, maybe Thor two. Yeah, you're right. Well, then, then, I don't know. Yeah, but like Avengers came out like not um, Captain America did come out a few months after Thor last yeah. year, so that could be the same thing again. I don't know. There's a uh, a Shield TV show, and yeah, Peter Shield. Coulson is going to be in it. So yeah, he's, uh, he's not dead. Yeah. Probably pretty much a prequel to it. Yeah, I assume it would be a prequel, though, because... Uh, I don't know. It doesn't sound like it from what I heard. No? No. Okay. You ever heard of those uh, those things? Oh, what the hell are they called? It's like a clone of people. Like they use it like a robot. A clone that's yeah. a robot. That's what he used. Ah, uh, okay. So he's probably... Like Nick, like Nick Fury uses them all the time. How the hell are they called? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So uh, the, the, So the... Whoever got killed, like what? The, he's going to be a robot, or is it the real one, or what? Do you mean? It's got a clone, maybe. It's a clone. The clone probably got killed, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see about that. The name of that thing, because I can't remember. There's also uh, Justice League apparently coming in. Uh, I think it's 2015, something like that. So. Yeah, isn't the Superman film as well next year, Man of Steel? Yeah, so Man of Steel's next year. LMDs, Life Model Decoys, that's what they're called. <laughs> I don't know, I like that name. Yeah, LMD. Life Model Decoy. Pretty cool. That's cool. Probably going to watch that. Interesting. Interesting uh, series. Can't wait for Iron Man 3 next When's year. When's the start, though? That's next year, is it? Next year, I think. Probably, I don't know exactly, but probably, yeah. Yeah, I mean, probably I might check, check it out as well. Yeah, maybe on IMDb or something on that. Probably check uh, when it's coming out. But uh, yeah, Avengers is uh, still an awesome movie. Uh, I watched, I forgot to put it down here, I watched uh, last Sunday with my nephew. I watched Wally for I don't know how many times I've I've seen this movie. But, uh, that still movie my favorite. sucks. <laughs> uh, it's still my favorite Pixar movie. Still my favorite of all of, all of them. Um, 
Yeah, I really like Wally. It's a, it's a great Pixar film. I still have yet to watch Brave and um, Cars 2. I still have yet to see them. Yeah, like I saw Cars 2, and it's not very good. I didn't even enjoy Cars 1, so... Yeah, Cars is... Well, is my least... I, I still like it, though, but, like... I like all of the Pixar films, but it's pretty much my least favorite with them. Um, Finding Nemo after that. I mm-hmm. do not get the love for Finding Nemo. I honestly don't. I've seen it too often, Finding Nemo, so I don't really appreciate it as much as I used to. I, I like, I, I watched, yeah. Uh, yeah, I watched it the first time, and I was like, I liked it, though, but I don't see why people really like this film. Like, really, mm-hmm. really, like, some people fucking love Finding Nemo and say it's the best Pixar film, but no. The best one but, that came out after that, and that's The Incredibles. So that's my favorite Pixar film. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great one also. I think uh, Ellen DeGeneres' uh, character is pretty awesome in Fighting Nemo. Uh, yeah, but Dobby. Or, not that Dobby, what's her name? Donnie or something, like her name is. Dolly? Or, I can't remember. Dolly or something. Right. Like it skins with D anyway, I know that for sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, watch Wally again. It was pretty, pretty awesome, you know, still. The ending still gets me all the time, so. Uh, really enjoy that movie. Um, it's hardly any like, like it's weird. It's like it's a bit of bloody robot, and it's, like yeah. doesn't speak. It's just all he has. Like the first maybe thirty minutes of the movie, there's like no dialogue at all. Yeah, it's just maybe he's just going like why, or like and then like Eva then. Yeah, and then directive and all that. So it's not very, not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot of um speaking in the first half hour or something. Well, except for I think it's Fred Willard. What the whole, you know, the band yeah. thing, the whole advertising stuff for that there. I think that's in the first 30 minutes. Yeah. And then, that's like, much the yeah, and then, like, you go to the ship then, and then it's, like, um, the captain with J- Jeff Garland. Yeah. And then, you know, a few people there. Yeah. It's just still an awesome movie, so a great movie. What's so. your favorite, um, Pixar film, Dark? Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> Putting you on the spot. You know, it's probably one of the Toy Story movies, I would think. It's hard I to say, that. for sure. Yeah. Third one, probably. Third one's uh, the best. Yeah. I mean, I like two and three. I mean, I like all of them. It's, you know. Mm-hmm. Toy, like, Story, the Toy Story ones will probably be after the Incredibles. Well, so I guess I'd say Toy Story three, but uh, it's a t- it's close to Toy Story two. I don't I don't know for sure. Yeah, yeah. I I love I love all them films. So I, just, I love. Yeah, them. they're awesome. They're awesome. Still, whole, like yep. Toy Story's like seventeen years old this year. Mm, to me, I got yeah. still a still a great film. That's amazing. Seventeen years. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> wow. And next year, next year's Pixar movie is uh, sequel to Monsters. Well, prequel mainly, prequel, <laughs> Monsters yeah. University, which yeah. I'll be very much looking forward to as well. That's one of my favorites as well, Monsters Inc. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a great one. It's an awesome. One. I just want to say Incredibles too. Give me that, damn it. Yeah. Get Brad. Supposedly in the works. Supposedly in the yeah, works. Yeah. Get Brad Bird on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the yeah, I watched Wally, and I also watched the World Series of Baseball, which started uh, started the uh, middle of last week. The Tigers and the um, Giants. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people tweeting about that, so have. Yeah, Giants played 2 nothing. so continues tonight. Can't wait to see what happens. Um, I'm not, I don't really care for either teams, but, you know, uh, I know Art's from Detroit, so, or he's from Michigan, so he he's pulling for the Tigers, of course, so kind of a little bit towards the Tigers myself, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, that's pretty much it. Detroit. Is it Detroit Tigers and New York Giants? Is that it? No, it's Detroit Tigers and San Francisco Giants. Okay. So the 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 whole giant bomb game. Oh yeah, that's right. Through. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They were the, going the on about Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's pretty much what I've been watching. We'll talk about the other thing that I've been watching also. So. 
I guess since Derek only watched that too, I guess go ahead there. Yeah, I haven't really been watching that much as well. <laughs> Finishing off the Jackass trifecta because I mentioned this over the last few weeks. I, I think I mentioned I don't I think I just mentioned Jackass two last week last time. Um, yeah, I watched Jackass the film, which um, I just watched it anyway just to finish it off though, and it's still you know some parts of it are still funny and. Um, I remember I wa- I like the commentary on it in DVD with the cast crew, just someone like rubbing into each other. I find it pretty funny, so I do, and it's it's really good. And the car toy up its butt uh, up his butt is just gross, but kind of funny. And yes, True Blood, still watching True Blood season five, and it's getting pretty pretty good. So. Hopefully, um, with the guest we have, hopefully on next week now, she couldn't make it this week, but hopefully she'd be on soon. Steph, she can talk about True Blood with me since I know she watches it and very much enjoys it, so I will get some. I can have someone else to talk to you about True Blood, so... so uh, but anyway, we can talk about a certain show now that the latest series has started, the first few yep. episodes in, and I've finally gotten around to watch it. There you go, so, finally. <laughs> he's going to be the center of relief now, and that is, of course, The Walking Dead. I've watched season one, well, except for the last episode. I watched a bit of it there. I meant to watch it, though, before we started recording tonight, tonight but I forgot. Mm-hmm. So I've watched all but the last, like, chunk of the sixth episode, though, but... Um, I'm going to basically say this out now. This is my opinion only. I like it. I think it's good, but I don't love it. So that's, mm-hmm. that's pretty much my opinion on the matter, though. Like, I do like some of the characters, though. Um, I don't know how they're going to be now in the later season. I could like fear the characters and then end up basically fucking hating them later on. I don't know how many of these characters survive now. I know a few of them survive now, but I'm, I don't know of any of these characters. I know, um, like, a few of them did die there. Like, you know, Amy, that was an Andrea's sister, she got mauled by zombies in the fourth episode, and then Jim got bit there, and he was sent left out the day when they were going to the CDC center. Man, that's so far away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much it, yeah. Yeah, and then they found, they, yeah, basically, like, when I watched it, they got into the CDC center and found the gay there, the gay, like, Nora Emmerich. The doctor. Yeah, the doctor from the Truman Show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's basically all I know him from. That's all mm-hmm. I know him from, that Truman Show. I think his name's Nora Emmerich anyway, so. Um, that's basically where I'm at, and he's just basically showing him around and out there, and that's pretty much all I know. And I did show, um, like, the start of that episode where they showed, um, what happened to the hospital where Rick was staying in. Mm-hmm. Or just basically got overrun by zombies, and then these guys in the fucking suits just basically came in and started shooting up everyone, even if they weren't zombies, they just started shooting them up. And killing mm-hmm. everyone and all out there as well, and then, you know, what the name Shane, trying to get him out, though, and then basically, nope, can't get it, just left him to die, pretty much, so. Yeah. That'll come back later. <laughs> In the series. <laughs> I want, let, just ask me a question now, answer this question now. Okay. I don't know if it does get answered or not, though. We know that Shane was kind of, you know, diddling his wife. Mm-hmm. Did he find out about that? Yep. Good. Because <laughs> I like to see what happens when he finds out about that. That's all I want to know. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, he does find out about that. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it's handled very well in the TV show. They leave it a little more no. open. In the comics, it's very definitive what happened. Right, mm-hmm. so it's okay. So it's much better in the comics then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm enjoying it at the moment, but I'm not really, like, you know overly gaga about it now not like oh my god this series is fucking awesome now but I, I know you really I know you really really like the comic books now Derek and I might check out the comics I might buy it when I'm off and read it and see what my thoughts are because I'm very yeah, much I'm going to have myself <laughs> I'm going to have to do that myself very much interested in checking it out because I fucking love the Walking Dead game oh yeah love it it's definitely one of my favourite games this year and I'm, I'm enjoying the, the show so I just have to round it out and get the comic Series. Yeah, 
And I yeah, the comics are better than the game and the show. I get the two companions then, like it goes up to issue 96, and then I could get the rest of the issues then. It's up, what's it now, 102, 103, is it? Uh, 103 just came out. Well, I don't know. If, it wasn't last week, but I read 103 last week, and that's that's the latest issue. Okay, so. I I'll I'll get those two companions. I think they're like 30 odd pound or something, so. I might, I might just get the first one actually and see what I feel about it, but chances are from knowing you, Derek, about your love for it, though, I might, I'll probably like it myself. Mm-hmm. I think I'll do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, know but anybody I'm... that does not like the comics. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, that I've read them. Yeah, I know Andy from the Rad Rascals. I think he's read some of them and he really likes it as well. And a few other people I know of really, really love the comics as well. We must say it's fucking more, much more better than the show. And oh, yeah. So... I've asked the kids, so I've, I like the show, so chances are I should really, really like the, love the comic book, book then. Mm-hmm. So, I'll give you my thoughts, I'll, I'll probably get, I'll probably get next one I'm off and give you my thoughts then in a few weeks time about that, so. But anyway, that's all I've been saying, going on about, so you can go and talk about season three then. And spoil me rotten. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we'll try not to spoil too much, cause I know I don't like, I don't really like being spoiled in uh, in the episodes. So I, I, I stay away from Twitter on Sunday nights. So. I'm one of those <laughs> ones that don't really care, though. Like, I don't, I'm not really annoyed when I get spoiled, but, but sometimes... There are, but, there are things I don't care about. Like, there are things you can spoil for me, and I don't care, but that's one that I kind of care about, yeah. that I don't want to be spoiled. On Game know. of Thrones as well. Game of Thrones. Game yeah. of Thrones would probably be one, although I do, I do got spoiled, and that was basically my own fault, like I did mention this before, where I read a blurb on the back of the, the latest book, and I basically thought, oh, great, he's dead. Like a certain, yep. certain, a certain main character in the series is, gets killed later on, it's like, okay, he's dead now, so, know what happens there. Yeah. So. So, yeah, that's, um, uh, season three kicked off, I guess, two weeks ago. Uh, episode one, um, which I found absolutely fantastic. I thought it was amazing. Uh, I think there was more action in episode one of season three than the entire season two. So, oh yeah, yeah. I think so too. <laughs> yeah. I heard, yeah, I heard the first episode of season two is pretty good, and the season the season finale is pretty good as well. But then I heard like yeah. the, the middle stuff's pretty pretty meh yeah I, I guess the middle episode of season two is good i guess which one before the break they had yeah before the break they, they and they're doing it this i think it's 16 they're doing this year isn't it i think so i think they're doing the same thing there's going to be a break uh yeah somewhere yeah so. it's like yeah doing lock of weeks and ends a break for a few months and then it comes back though which I don't, it's kind of dumb. I don't, I don't understand that now, what the reason behind that is. Budget? Because budget or it, something, I don't know. Yeah, because they're not, you know, they're not NBC or ABC or, you know, they're not a major uh, network. Yeah, so they can't do it all at once, I guess, then. Yeah, they, they have to put other stuff also on there, so. Yeah, like if it was HBO now, that probably was no problem or something along those lines, so. Yeah, well, Game of Thrones, fuck, comes out, comes back what? March 31st next year? Yeah, March. That's a fucking long time before we see more Game of Thrones. So, yeah. Yeah, it's only 10 episodes, which, yeah. That's probably one of the main things I hear about. It's only like 10 episodes. I kind of wish it was like maybe more than that, a bit more. Like, you know, yeah, 12 or like a couple of more than that. And there, there's, yeah, they're splitting uh, book three into two seasons. Yeah. So. Oh, they are. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That's probably a good thing. Yeah, because book three apparently has a whole lot of stuff, so it'll be interesting. But nonetheless, back to Walking Dead. Um, episode one was fantastic. Whole lot of action. Uh, I think they're more of a, they 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 look more like a like they're not they don't look like a rugged band of people just going around trying to they more they they look like an elite squad of zombie hunting guys now. Yeah. 
<laughs> like even the kid is is freaking tearing it up. <laughs> like it's it's pretty crazy. Um, hey, Carl or Carl, yeah, the little boy. Okay. So well, I know he survived then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, spoilers. <laughs> he's still there. Um, well, I don't really mind now if he's like I don't really care though. It's like as long as one of the like, but like I assume it's my I assume one of the few main of the characters that I ha- know at the moment get killed off. I assume. Well, a few, yeah, quite a few. <laughs> uh, but the few I like though, so I assume probably a few of them I like at the moment probably get there. Yeah, yeah. saying the less than just basically get killed. So. Mm-hmm. So they finally make it to the prison, the uh, infamous prison, and uh, they go. I guess they. I I don't want to. I don't want to talk too much because I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't probably watched it yet. So yeah, there's some people. There is actually people out there that don't really want to watch it though, and just rather wait till all of them right. Like they record it and then they, like watch it all at like a marathon, and also some of them wait until like the box sets are out as well, which. I don't really know why I do that there because quite frankly, what, why wait for them? Because it'll be a long time. Like it'll be a couple of weeks before the like new season starts before you get a box set, which I do not understand. I think that's part of the reason why. Oh, mark it and get it now, and then you can watch them before the, just in time for the new season. Yeah. So, anyway, I don't. I don't want to get too much into it. I guess we will just say how we liked. Uh, the first two episodes. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, yeah. like yeah, like I I love I I really loved the first one. Second one was good, but I think they spent too much time on a certain character, and uh, which you know I don't know it kind of. But anyway, it, it it was good, but I think they they spent too much time on a certain character. So did they find Merle? Not yet. He's still not found, is he not? No. Wow. So he's not no. all. He's not in the next like, season two or anything like that at all, then. A little bit. Oh, You'll see. Bit. Okay. You'll see. Because <laughs> I know Alec like, he, he he was stuck at the pipe there at the top of the building, and then he cut his fucking own arm off to like, get away. Yeah, cut his head off. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'd like to see what happens there, and see see on one of the the faint him or anything. The hand comes back and kills everybody. Yeah. That's what happens. <laughs> Seriously? So, <laughs> oh, no. so, um... Yeah, it's the thing. It's the thing from Adam Sandler. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like uh, Evil Dead 2. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I, I, what are your thoughts, Derek, I guess? On, uh, well, first let me did. say uh, I had to watch the first episode via Torrance because... Dish Network had this big, long dispute with AMC and refused to carry the network over, you know, raising fees. I don't know. They claimed that AMC was raising their fees and Dish Network didn't want to carry that on to their customers or, you know, I don't even know exactly what what the reasoning was. Um, so I missed out on Season 5 of Breaking Bad all last year. I mean, I think I, I did watch, like, the first episode I downloaded on Torrance, but that's just kind of a pain in the ass to do. I'd rather just watch it yeah. on my TV. Um, and then season two was on on Sunday, and I was like, you know, we are kind of in the process of switching to another provider, but we didn't really want to because there's so much stuff on the DVR that we haven't watched yet, and we don't want to lose that because there's no way to, you know, keep it. Um, and then I got an email at like about 8.40 or so, and the show is on at 8 o'clock here. Mm-hmm. Um, and it says, good news, AMC is back on Dish Network. It's like, what? Are you kidding? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we go look and like, oh, there it is. You know, it's on there now. So, our, you know, we, we had a timer on the DVR already to record Walking Dead. So it recorded like 20, 20 minutes of the second episode. And then they replayed it again later. So we recorded that one. And then I watched uh, episode two the next day. Um, mm-hmm. Along with that, that, there's that show called Talking Dead. It's like a little, like kind of like a talk show type thing. Yeah. Um, and I watched that too. Um, 
So now I have AMC again, and I can watch it without having to, you know, dick around with either switching my provider or, you know, illegally obtaining the, the show. So, um, so that's good. I mean, I wish they would have taken care of this shit way back when Breaking Bad Season 5 was still on. Mm-hmm. But um, that's unfortunately not the case. So you watch Breaking Bad then, huh, have you? I watched the first four seasons. And is it as good as people, what people say? Oh yeah, I think it's, it's I think it's a better show than Walking Dead is. Yeah, I heard I have to watch it as well because I heard nothing but good things about about that show. Yeah, I think I'm gonna buy the Blu-rays, watch it. I'm probably watching it on Netflix because the first four seasons are on Netflix. Yeah, they are. Yep. Um, as far as season three, I think it's really really good so far. Um, the first episode, well, both of them have a lot of action, uh, a lot of stuff yep. going on. Um, new characters, um, you know, there's kind of like a side story going on with a couple other characters. You don't really know what's going to happen with them yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I kind of do because I know who the, some of those characters yeah. are. But, um, and I completely disagree with what Dennis said about them spending too much time on one character. I thought it was fine. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else he would do besides show more zombie killing, and that's, you know... I guess I would after a while. Uh, yeah, exactly. I want to get some character stuff going. Yeah, I guess so. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, without getting into too much detail, it, you know, it's great. I'm, re- I'm glad I can finally watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got AMC back. Really looking forward to watching it tomorrow. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to talk without, you know, going into it. Spoiling any everything. at all. Yeah. yeah. So... Someone dies. <laughs> yeah, well, somebody always yeah. dies. <laughs> yeah, someone yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, someone or something dies. Yeah. So, yeah, much more action, I guess, in season three. Uh, starting off with a bang, I guess. And did you watch the preview for season for uh, episode three? Yeah, I did. Right there. Yeah. yeah. I don't Seems know why like people like that character so much. I think he's kind of dumb. I yeah. forgot about him, I guess. Is this a new character, <laughs> is it, or an old one? Mm-hmm. There's some new characters, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. It's no one I have seen yet, I guess. No. I don't know. I don't know what. Maybe. No, no. I think... No, as if he's in season two, then no. I've, like, told you, it's just the last episode of season one I have to watch. No. I guess it's a major character. I should say. Right. Well, if you're talking about the one I'm talking about, yes. Well, I guess so, but I don't want to don't want to spoil too much. So yeah, just go and spout uh, spoil like to me. Who dies? No, we joking. Like, who oh, dies? No, we joking. Zombie number four. Zombie number. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, Dallas! <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like zombie no, number four. <laughs> also, a whole actually, bunch of zombies. <laughs> also, actually, want to ask as well. Um, does does those black people at the first episode? Do you see them again? Nope. No. Oh, okay. The, the, you, mean, you mean the son and his uh, yeah, father? The father and son guys what Rick came across in the first episode? No, you don't. Okay. That sucks. So, yeah. It's kind of weird, but you don't. So that's, that's still kind of left unresolved then, I guess? Mm-hmm. A couple of things are left unresolved, actually. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of one of the things that I hate, though, like certain things. Like, there is certain story, like, like I want to see what happens here, though. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's one of the things of True Blood at the moment. Like, there's these so these different side stories in True Blood as well. Like, there's kind of, like, four of them that's going on at the moment. And I can't, mm-hmm. I'm kind of interested in see what happens next in each one of them. So. Do you get to know what happens to those two people, uh, Derek, in the comics? Um, Yes. Okay. They're not, well, no, actually. Well, are they the same characters? I don't even know. There are some characters that are, I don't know if they're the same name, but they're in the same situation, and you do find out what happens to them later on. Mm-hmm. They got the thing, is like he wants, like they were going, and they basically, Rick goes off to Atlanta, and basically says, meet me there. And then, like, at the last time, he's like, basically on the um, the walk, the re- walkie-talkie, the talk, the walkie-talkie, whatever, and basically says, don't mm-hmm. go to Atlanta. I leave, I'm staying here. I leave you a uh, map and instructions here on the car. 
do not go to Atlanta and just follow us. We're at the CDC center. Yeah, that's the last I know of it. So I don't know what's if that's anything different in the comic books or whatnot now. So. That I um. A little different. Yeah, it's a different. Oh, okay, different situation. Yeah. A lot of stuff is different in the comics. Yeah, it's going. That's always going to be the case now. It's definitely going to be different characters. It won't be characters. The worst characters are in the comic books or not in the series, I guess. And some some ones just created solely for the series that are in the com. They're not in the comic books. It's always the case with adaptations like that. Yep. So, I think that's all. I think that's probably enough Walking Dead talk yep. at the moment so I do so I'll probably watch yeah. more of it though and maybe give you my thoughts more oh, more of my thoughts in the future then I'll probably try to finish season one I will and then watch some of season two before next week and see what my thoughts are in it I actually could like those long you know boring episodes more than most <laughs> people you never know I will yeah. say that uh, Rick is becoming more like the Rick in the comics now in this season yeah. He's becoming more uh, jaded, I guess we could say. It's like, trust no one, you know, <laughs> I don't take shit from nobody. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Kind of yeah. like that, yeah. Well, it was a kind yeah. of bit, a bit like that in the first few episodes, in a way, I guess, and like certain ones with, like, Merle and not there, but, yeah, if it's more like... Well, on... He's a little bit more of a wimp in... Uh... In the first couple of uh, yeah, he's well, yeah, yeah, he acts kind of Takes wimpers. A while. As, yeah, he acts kind of wimpers as well, though. Just the way yeah. he acts, so he does kind of like act a bit wimpers, though. But you can see how how much it changed him to uh, to go through all that shit. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. fa- yeah, and then probably like seeing people, he like gets gets to know like getting dropped off, like flays and things like that as well. So mm-hmm. sure, that doesn't help matters. Yeah. And there seems to be no end, so it's kind of depressing for him, I guess. Now, what's the timeline now? Like, how far is it, like, from the first book, the first comic to, like, the latest one now? How, like, how much of a timeline is it? Is it, like, a number of weeks, months, years, or whatever now? Do you know, Derek? What do you mean, like, how long have the comics been out, or? No, you know, like, you know, like, yes, no, not not how long the comics are out, like, the timeline, say, like, when it's, first of all, like when you know Rex entered and acts in the hospital and all that stuff, like how long is that from what it is now? Like how many months have passed, or how many years have passed, or whatever it is. Well, I don't know the exact time. I think maybe it's only like two years in like the show or in the comic book time. But I will say that right now, where they are in season three, it happened in issue twelve in the comics, and they're up to issue one hundred and three right now. Wow. So wow. there's a lot of shit that's happened since then. Mm-hmm. A lot. Jeez, they're fucking hell. They're going very slow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, but I think I think in the actual like not not game time, but the show time, it's been like two years, I think. Yeah. Okay. But don't call me on that. You you probably want to look it up somewhere. Yeah, I might look it up later and say timeline or something. But yeah, um, I'm interested more in Walking Dead anyway. I'll get the comic, I'll get the compendium, and like Dance World as well, and probably we'll probably yep. discuss it as well in a few episodes' time. And more Walking mm-hmm. Dead, because I know you'll be watching it week in and week out till the season break. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then when it comes back, exactly. we'll talk about more about it, and then Game of Thrones will come back on, and we'll talk about it. Out knowledge him like yep. we did last year. Exactly. I'll have to get HBO again because I cancelled it since there's, I don't really watch anything on it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get it again when uh, Game of Thrones comes out. Yeah. Yeah. The show's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Walking Dead, I have to watch it on a Monday on Zoom because we don't have uh, AMC here. So I have to wait till Monday night to watch it. Yeah, so. it's like the same thing. You know that, that Zoom thing on the Xbox? It didn't work until just with the new bash, new dashboard. I could never get into the like the movies or the music or whatever. It never worked. Really? Yeah, it's weird. Well, oh, speaking of the new dashboard, what do you guys think of it? <laughs> I don't really use it much. I just kind of jump into Borderlands 2 and that's it. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of littered with 
crap. It's I get a little with that, and it's just basically the fucking bigger tiles. Whoop the fucking do. Yeah. I think it's okay. I, I like the pin, like how you can pin stuff. Yeah, that's cool. That's really fun. That's great. I, I think it goes faster. It seems to. I think it's faster now. Not my eyes. No. Uh, I think well, considering the fact that I pressed redeem code, right, and it took me about 30 seconds to a minute for that to load up, that yeah. goes into case how still how fucking slow it is, and they say the things. Mm. Okay. I haven't redeemed the code, so I can't really... No, they're fine. I've redeemed Gearbox shift codes, but that's inside Borderlands 2. Yeah. I, 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 I haven't really redeemed anything. I just went, you know, I tried, you know, swiping from one, you know, with the bumpers, doing that fast and seeing. But when you go into the games played, like all your, I guess your library, it loads up really fast now. It goes like, Broop, and you have them, and, Broop, you know, it's really, really fast. When before it took, like, maybe 30, 45 seconds. Before everything loaded up. Yeah, I think it did actually. It's a bit faster than that way. Though it still took a bit while for that thing. Yeah, but I think the like loading up the apps now, like my apps and thing, I think it does be faster now because that took ages to load up before. Because usually that sometimes at the back out and then load it up again for it to load up. Mm -hmm. What I don't like is the um, like the, the the fact that you have a ton of tiles and it's just like promotional stuff and. It's everywhere now. Like, yeah, just fucking ads everywhere and all that shit. It's like fucking sick. And people are saying, what's the point? Why Why are we paying for this now? Yeah. We're all getting exactly. sick fucking ads. Like, every single every single section in my thing has a fucking love film advertisement. Mm -hmm. Every fucking section. Like, go to games, love film. Go to the TV and mo movies, love film. We should have, like, pop-ups. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's just a love fun thing anyway. It's like a wee fucking one of those tiles has the, like the video advertisement thing, though. It's a, uh, I guess I don't even really look at them. I don't have a problem with the ads. They're just, I mean, they're there. You don't have to click on them. Yeah, I don't even look. I just go to what I want. You know, I want to go to my recently game plays or recently played games, or I want to go to the marketplace. Yeah, at least it doesn't like get in the way where you have to like watch something or you actually have to click on something. Or yeah, if I click a button that. to close it, it's just there, and it's like, eh, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. nice but stuff. it's faster, so that's a good thing. It's faster, it's, you know. Yeah, like I did not like, it. yeah, just I'll have to try it out a few more times and see if it's still a lot. Like, that, that does redeem code thing for the Darksiders 2, Argos 2 thing just took me a while for it to load up. I yeah, think, I I think my, to, sorry, go ahead. Communicate with the server. Does it have to communicate with the server and then... All that. Yeah, I, I think know. my I think the server was slow. Or my speed was slow at the time because as well I redeemed the code and started downloading. And then I just went to something, do something else, and I came back like thirty minutes later or something, twenty thirty minutes later, and I was like at twelve percent. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, this is fucking slow. Because I downloaded some songs for uh, Rock Band Blitz, and it went like really fast. Like before in Rock Band Blitz, when I used to uh, go to download a song, you know, it pulls up like the Xbox thing, and it's that's where you go to buy the song. It took like a while, like you had the spinning thing that went, and then whoop, okay, now it popped up, but now it's like whoop, immediately have the the song information and download really fast. So, I I, I really like that they you know fixed that. That's really cool. The the ads I'm not fond of, but you know I guess we have to live with them, and they're not intrusive like uh, Derek said so. Yeah, it's not like you have, you have to go up and it's like a big fucking ad comes, like, cover, like you know, some of those, like, sites you go to and then, like, this big fucking ad thing, video comes up. YouTube. Yeah, those pop-up things. Like, yeah. sometimes if you go to IGN or some of the gaming websites and then, like, pop up and you have to press the X to exit, I hate them. Okay, well, YouTube has the fucking ads before every fucking video, so that's that's intrusive and annoying. So I don't mind the ones where you can skip if you wait a few seconds and skip there, all right. But those yeah. ones you can't, I, uh, the, they kind of do annoy me, though. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, nonetheless, I kind of enjoyed a new one. I said I didn't like it. I tweeted, that, oh, it's crap, but I didn't really get to play along with it, play, play around with it. And have you tried Internet Explorer? <laughs> no. No. They can't go eat my ass. That, that's the thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I won't be using it anytime soon because I don't use Internet Explorer. So no, nope. my computer is like uh, three steps away from my Xbox. So if I want to go online, I just <laughs> walk to my computer and go online. Yeah, but you know, it's good for people who you know do everything on the Xbox. It's media center now, so yeah, yeah. People watch people watch YouTube videos and then as well, which yep. I honestly don't get why, because that YouTube app is god awful. It's slow. That's the problem. I wonder if they fixed it. It's slow, and I don't know if you don't if the video is not in 720p, like if it's in 360 or 240 or something like that, that's and you watch that on your huge fucking TV, it must look like. <laughs> So it's gonna be pixelated. Not another there. problem is a lot of them. A lot of the videos aren't even. They don't allow them to be used on you know mobile apps or any other kind of app except for just on the PC and that's yep. it. That's right. That's a problem. I hate too. that. I hate that as well. I do hate that because some of the videos I click on when I'm looking on Twitter and my apps just go to it and says this video can't be loaded. They go great. It's one of those. Yeah. Topics. No kidding. Mm-hmm. I wonder if our podcast was out there as well for some reason. I think it was episode twelve or something. I couldn't load up on the iPad as well for some reason. I, I don't know. I think you need to click some something. Or, I know. guess, but like all the episode, other episodes have been fine. It's just that one I couldn't do. It's like, why would you want to reduce your viewing audience? Yeah, I mean, there's probably like 20% of people use YouTube on their phone or iPad or something, not on the computer. You know, it's probably more than that. I don't even know, but. I know I heard a stat, I heard a stat that like 20% of Facebook users use their phone only yep. for it. So I, mean, I imagine YouTube is probably the same. Like yeah. that Gang- 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 Gangnam style uh, Ghostbusters remix I, mashup I put up like not too long ago yesterday. Like that doesn't have a, uh, you can't view it on your uh, mobile devices. And some guy put in a comment in, uh, in on the video. He said, dude, why don't you activate that? You're going to get like... Twice the, twice as much views if you do that, you know, mm-hmm. because it's a really good mashup, and the guy would probably get a ton of views if he activated that. That's yeah, and go viral or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Anyway. I think that's all we have to talk about. Now. I think we've talked long <laughs> I enough. Think I think we're done. I think it's an hour three-hour episode as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, we're coming up on the three-hour uh, mark, like in a couple of seconds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we haven't gone to the four-hour mark yet, like Rod Rascals did last week. They went four hours. Jesus Christ! Oh my so God! They did. Yeah. So we're not we're not just there just yet, but I don't think we ever would be. So I think three Maybe hours. Maybe the game or thing will be four hours. I fucking hope not. <laughs> yeah, but we'll yeah we'll we'll probably do that anyway, like near the end of the year anyway, like last week or two of December. Mm-hmm. Or in January, start of January, and just basically go through maybe. Well, I might go through some of our favorite games of the year, and then we'll just compose of a top five, you know, list individually, and maybe mm-hmm. one for the podcast overall, what like ones we can agree with, you know, like you know, Jam Bomb Day, pretty much. Yeah. So, anyway, that is all for this week. So, thank you all for listening. Um, before we go, of course, we plug iTunes. Just subscribe to us there. Um. You can also follow us on Twitter. I am Dow M eighty five. I'm D Boy Dan on Twitter. I am Gigastorm Z. And you also can join follow us on Facebook at the Yana Again and Podcast Group for you know little news tidbits and other stuff like um episode updates and whatnot and the question of the week. And also that is posted on Twitter at United Gandom. And also yep. you can email us at unitedgandom at gmail dot com with the band wasteland that it is at the moment as usual. <laughs> yeah. Um but I before we go now you just want to mention anything else before we go? No. I think that's it. We're done. I'm gonna go see Wreck It Ralph on Tuesday. We get a free pass to see it for free. Oh man. I'm I'm see it. Screening. That looks awesome. That's fucking thumbs down I hit till next fucking year. I fucking Jeez. hit that. It's like it was the really? Muppets last year. Muppets didn't come out here till fucking February. I do not get that whatsoever. You think they pull it out for fucking holiday season? Like, where's, yeah. where's, what's the... Oh, man. I do, I want to say that for myself. 
Yeah, I'm not the way it looks really cool. Fucking Fabry. I think it's Fabry. That's great. It's like Disney again. Like, like It was like Disney and Muppets last year. It came out in November. I think it came out like Thanksgiving week. Didn't it? Mm -hmm. In November. Exactly. And it's like, yeah, great. I can watch. I can, yeah, I want to see when it's out here. Oh, no, it's out in uh, February 10th. Mm. And same thing with Racket Ralph. I think it's out in November. It doesn't come out here till February. So, um, you can let me know. You can let us know what the high that is, Derek, when you see it. So yeah, yep, I, I'm very much I'm very much curious to hear what it's about. It looks I like it looks good from the trailer. So this could be an actual video game maybe or it's not actually a video game adaptation. It could be good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it exactly. could be the, it could be the best video game maybe since The Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, yeah okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll let that one slide. Okay. Well, like, <laughs> great movie. I love that movie. <laughs> uh, I like well, Mortal Kombat yeah, so. too. That's a good movie. Yeah, that's a good movie. Oh, God, don't. Oh, Mortal mm -hmm. Kombat 2, all right, okay. I thought you meant Mortal Kombat 2 and Mortal Kombat Annihilation, I thought you meant. No. Oh, no. Because no, <laughs> that's no. god-awful. Yeah, that's horrible. Mortal Kombat 1. Awesome. We actually should do some things in the future. Some damn um, challenges. Try to do a challenge. Yeah. If you fail, you have, to do it. you have to do that. You have to watch one of those films. <laughs> With your eyes clapped open, like a <laughs> clockwork works, a clockwork orange style. Yeah, it drops in the eyes, and you have to watch it. No, no, not anymore. <laughs> I can't stand it. <laughs> like watch those UA Bow films. I bet you've ever watched them. Uh, I've seen nope. maybe a couple, but I've never none, seen of, none of the really bad ones. You yeah. would all have to. I like to watch one of them just to see how bad they are because they're. Never, Postal in the name of the king, dungeons, um, what's it? Blood one. Rain. I think they did Blood Rain one. He did House of the Dead, I think, and Alone in the Dark. Yeah. So apparently, uh, apparently, um, Postal isn't that bad. Apparently, I heard. I never I played the game, so I don't know what the film's about. I just seen photos of the game, though. Postal Town looks fucking nuts. So. Yeah, it is. <laughs> And, like, Gary Coleman's in that game as well. I think he was in the film as well, so... Yeah. So, yeah, he was. Um, but anyway, that's uh, basically not a tangent there at the end. So, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> now, we'll see you all next time. Hopefully, we'll have Steph on, and basically, we'll be in preparation for my little trip to Edinburgh, which I'll talk about, i say, in a few weeks' time. So, stay tuned for that. Yeah. So until then, guys, we'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Uh, Good night. See you. Where do I stop this? Okay.